All right. Hit the old go live. All right, so. Okay. So there we go. Sorry for the. I, I don't right. know why I apologize because it, like, like, the people, when they go to listen to this, they're going to have no idea we just recorded 30 minutes of nothingness. You think it was just 30 minutes? <laughs> I'll apologize to Keenan. <laughs> He's going to have to listen to this twice to hear the ending. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Welcome to the Polish Recorders Podcast. Round two. <laughs> Listen, we can't do it until everybody around too. <laughs> Kay, Casey already thinks he broke it. And he did break it. Well, he, I'm going to blame this on Casey. I'm telling him round two. So we've also got TikTok Live over here. You'll learn more about that in a minute. <laughs> um, That's so great. Yeah. I it feel is, like... I the feel funny like thing about this is, is that like, if people are listening to your podcast, they're, they already know what they're getting. Yeah. You know what I mean? They is it high production? That, they already know that I'm an idiot. They want the information. And I'm trying to figure out my new, my new gear. We bought a uh, Atmos Ninja. I have no idea how to use it. <laughs> um, I'm trying to use it on my Canon EOS R, which uh, I had yeah. purchased last year. I'm still just. Is this learning. the first time you've recorded the podcast on this camera? Uh, no. no, actually, I have recorded okay. a number of the podcasts on this camera. Okay, this is just the first time I'm using the Atmos Ninja Five to try to record it because. Previously, I had to record like 25 minutes at a time right. and then edit it down. With gotcha. the Ninja, I know I'm supposed to be able to record the entire thing. Now, as we realized, we just found out. I it don't didn't work to, out. I don't know how to get the camera yeah. to stay from going to sleep. You're going to you're gonna have to YouTube that one. I'm going to have to YouTube it. Yeah. A YouTuber is going to so. have to use YouTube to try and figure out how to use right. said products. <laughs> so, when I finally figured it out, it's going to be great because it's going to make... The YouTube channel that much better, right? Well, hopefully, getting there. Not that my channel is great, but it's hopefully going to make it better. <laughs> so, uh, you, if you guys want the good news, well, I don't. You're going to get a good podcast. You want the bad news? There are going to be nuggets in it, but we didn't record those. So <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of good stuff. I feel really bad because like we had a lot of really good stuff we <sighs> chatted about already. Every time. And now we're going to end up forgetting about a lot of it. So hopefully we can nah, recap through. we'll just tangent some more. We will. And I'll probably lean on Keenan a little bit once in a while to like throw me back down a did, tangent did to we, where we were. Did we talk about that? <laughs> <laughs> what What is it that what is it that we brought up that was so good? Anyways. Anyway. We talked about. It was about, that northern chill water. <laughs> <laughs> we are staying hydrated. We are. Hashtag shameless plug. <laughs> <laughs> but we um, we did start off talking about how we just hit the bullet points. Again. You were hoping to be uh, season two, episode two. Ah, uh, yes. But episode two is actually needed to be rec um, edited. I haven't so, recorded. Yeah. And for those of you that are listening to this, you've already hopefully heard episode two. Yeah, let's and, hope. And realizing that. Um, chop chop. Steve did not get to be episode two. <laughs> That's okay. I just thought about a highlight here. I'm season two, episode three. 23? 23. Michael Jordan. Go. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird that we just thought of it at the same time. Because yeah, that was yeah. not in the first round. <laughs> no. That was not edited or scripted at all. So anyway, uh, but it's you, funny you got some bullet points. You got some questions for me? Let's I get do. the same role and then we'll get into some tangents. Season two, episode three. You are who and where are you from? Okay, so I my name is Steve Summers. I own. You did it better this time around. Did I? Sorry. Ish. Do it again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> take take twenty three. <laughs> my name is Steve Summers, and I live uh, just outside of Champaign, Illinois. I own Summershine Metal Polishing. All right. That is who I am. Is and what got you, or when did you start? How yeah. long have you been doing it, or when did you start polishing? So. I started polishing on my dad's truck. He got started trucking in the 80s, and when I was old enough to hold a rag and potentially make it shinier, he was like, here you go, figure it out. And so I started polishing back then, and it, it's always been a bit of an addiction. Sure. Like, as soon as I figured out that I could make stuff shiny, I would do it. So like, when we got into cars, as we got a little bit older, and like, on my bikes, I would always like polish the wheels on the bikes, make sure they're nice and clean. And then like, as we got a little bit older, uh, we had cars like the eight, the top of the of the AC condenser. Yep. Every time. 
I did mine every time too. Every time. Every time. When I worked in the truck. Or evaporator. Either I, way. I did that a lot. All the time. Dude, the AC lines are such a high quality <laughs> aluminum. They are. You polish all those little pieces. My Avenger. I had mine completely, <laughs> completely polished up. Actually. Uh, it's somewhere around here. I saw it. It's not in this room. It's it's at my house. It's at your house. It's at my it's house. That's the one I don't have a copy about here now that yeah. I think about it. Hmm. I've got the like Avenger. 60 of them in here and my Avenger didn't make the cut. That's sad. In, uh, that's... We'll put it over there somewhere. But what was your what was your polish of choice? Like so, oh well, polish of choice back in the day. So what I grew up on, what I was raised on, and to this day, that smell, because that <laughs> smell, you know what I'm talking about. I do. When you smell I that, do. you know exactly what it is. Yeah. I was raised on Bush. That's a beer. Not no. <laughs> <laughs> my dad doesn't drink i know he doesn't him and i have had that conversation yeah. we had it at louisville a few years back yep. i offered to buy him a drink and he's like i don't drink i'm like well that works so perfect i don't either <laughs> and uh so he uh we we bush polish bushes bush is it's bush isn't it just bush it's just bush bush polish yeah yeah bush. we had uh well, i started on that and grew up with that we, had, we always had a case of it in the basement same time i need something run down the basement everybody did everybody went to louisville and bought a case because it was it's on it. sale I got a good deal on Ted it. The man. stuff worked great. He's a little short old man. He said, buy this. This is the best stuff ever. And I and will remember. Like, yes. You were at uh, Louisville. Yeah. I think that was the first time I met you. Louisville. 16, yeah. In 16? Yeah, 2016. And uh, I was with the company and you and I had talked about, you know, you were yeah. getting into trying some Dad, new stuff. Dad came over and we were talking about polish and I was like, how long I want to I want to make my truck better, you know, look better and I want to get my uh, truck polished out. And you were like, well, what are you thinking? And dad pointed at your, your calendar was sitting there and it had your, uh, your day cab, your, your cab over, yep. had your cab over on it. And he's like, I want my tanks to look like that. And you looked at him and just, you're like, you, you kind of pause for just a second and you're like, there was no budget on that. Yeah. <laughs> so, I think maybe he asked you what that cost. He's like, what's it cost to make it look like that? And you're like, there's no budget. <laughs> so this is my this has always been my struggle and we talked about this a lot in the shop today we yeah. talked about it at length with keenan um like where do things stop mm -hmm. when it always comes to me there's no budget on my own stuff right like you're just investing your time mm -hmm. like what is your time worth see you had so for my cab over when i bought it mm -hmm. nothing was polished yeah. But I knew that my stuff was going to be underneath a microscope. Right. Everybody that walked past it and saw my name on it was going to be like, if your stuff isn't perfect, yeah. which is why most of my pickup is painted <laughs> or powdered if it could. Good call. The less I have to polish, the less I can get ripped on for. Right. But at the same time, like I knew my stuff was going to be underneath a microscope. So yep. I knew it had to be right. So I literally spent... I don't even know, 12, 14 hours on a fuel tank. And I wow. still haven't even pulled them off and done the backsides yet. I'm embarrassed Jeez. to say I haven't done the backsides yet. Yeah. But I need to at some point in time. Wow. But 12 to 14 could hours you imagine? sanding and polishing that. Dude, those tanks were white when One I bought One tank them. or both? Each. 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 14 hours a tank. And they're only the little tanks. Yeah, they're not big. They're, they're not huge. 100 gallon? Are they even that? Mm. They're probably 100 gallon. They're big. They're the, they're the big round oval, the big round tanks. They're maybe 110s. Yeah, they're Peterbilt, long. They're Peterbilt not 110. They're not long, but they're big. They're around. big around, yeah. yeah. Big old barrels. So I think they're the Peterbilt 110s. Yeah, and it's just they were white. They, they were white. I need to look at that picture that you were in the I earlier. The when we were scrolling through that, you had the picture with the flat on it. Yeah, I should do that again. Yeah. Um, I started sanding it at like 120 grit. How, hold up. Because I wanted to smooth out the welds. Oh really? Yeah. Oh. I wanted wow. it to be slick. slick. Like I didn't want it to be smooth. Like I was gonna worry about it cracking and breaking. Right. But I wanted the welds to be nice and slick. Nice so like slick. I sanded yeah. on this direction and that direction, and wow. then back up again. I wanted it to be cherry. That, that would make a good TikTok. Pull that, pull that picture out oh, of yeah. it, and then like video the picture, and then out of the way, you know, and then there it is behind <laughs> this all the like yeah, yeah. I can do that. That would be good. I have that. Well, I mean, we have there's a, there's a couple of good that. sound, like audios that would go well with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll have to hit you up for that. Right. We'll figure it out. But it was, it was one of those things, like when people ask you, like, what does that cost? It's like, how do you put a dollar value on that? You know, for me, <laughs> a 12 hour day in my shop is right. 1500, two grand on a, on a decent day, right. three grand on a really good day. Right. It's like, how do I charge somebody three grand for one fuel tank? 
Sorry. You don't. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, But the thing is, is that you could make a fuel tank look that good in two hours. Like, now compared that, to where I was. Right. Yeah. Not to that, maybe not to that standard. Sure. But for everybody Close else. Close-ish. For everybody else. Close-ish. Yeah. Right. But to get it to that level, like, oh, yeah. when somebody comes up and they're like, I want that, what's yeah. that cost? It's like, you don't want that. No, no, no. If you have to ask what this costs, you don't want it. Well, <laughs> and even then, like, I, I hate giving people the answer three grand. Right. You know what I mean? Like, because they're like, this guy's crazy. I can buy a brand new tank for 400 bucks. Yeah, well, it won't look like that. That size. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? I'm still going to have to put three grand into it to get mm -hmm. it to that level. You know what I mean? Like, it's just that much work to get it right. up there. So, it's a struggle. And it I. Is. I love when people come up and ask me like, what's that cost? Because I know that I've done enough work at that point that they want something that nice. Yeah. But at the same time, like, I hate to give the answer because so, nobody wants to hear that answer. So that's what, yeah, that's how that went down. So dad asked you how much, you said no budget. <laughs> and, uh, and then we, I don't think we bought anything at the show. I think they were out of their product, the liquid product, I think. Because so, I, I came by to get some. They were out. They, you guys had sold out of the liquid product. There we go. Very perfect. Your way. <laughs> uh, so they sold out of the liquid products. And uh, so I didn't get any. You're like, no big deal. And so I called you. That was in March. And then I think in, in July, like in July, I tried to polish my truck. We had a week down. And that's when I like picked up a buffer. And I'm like, I'm going to figure this out. Because we had buffer and... and uh, all sorts of products there at the sure. shop that we picked up over the years yep. and like tried to figure these things out. Yep. And um, I was like, I'm going to figure this out. And that's when I started talking to you. I think I was having some troubles trying to figure it out. I remember this. Yeah. And I was like sending you some, uh, some like pictures. I think I hit you up on Instagram yeah. at that time. And I was like sending some pictures like, you know, is this, how am I doing this right? Is this, that, other thing? And, and back in the day, that was 2016. So that would have been probably your infancy of YouTube. If you, did you have much at all on there? So actually, I, I started my YouTube, I think I looked at it the other day. I think my oldest video, I don't know if Keen wants to Google this and see what it was, but I think it was 2008 was my oldest oh, really? YouTube video. Polishing video? So it was either 2008 or 2010, I think was my first YouTube video. Yeah. My very first YouTube video was two years before that. So if my oldest video was 2010, I started in 2008. I deleted yeah. my oldest video. <sighs> I wasn't proud of it, but no, nonetheless. I mean, but that was like, that was early yeah. in YouTube. I was so, 2013. 2013, so it would have been 2011. Was All my one day. Was my first video. What was it? All in one day. Yeah, it was All a lot of concert day. stuff back then. It was then. really long. Oh, okay. Three seconds. So when, yeah. when, did TikTok, <laughs> when did you start? TikTok before TikTok. It was a TikTok before TikTok. When did you start doing uh, polishing videos on there? Uh, so I think my first Kena? polishing video was <laughs> same same area-ish, oh, really? 2000. So it would have been a year later, 2014 maybe. Yeah. In 2016, July of 2016, when I was trying to figure out how to buff a tank with a buffer. Because like the concept, I couldn't figure out. I'm like, I don't, I don't understand this. Like sure. you put the bar on the wheel, right? But how much? And then like then it throws stuff in your face and like this isn't very much fun. Yep. I I messed around with a little bit of uh buffing with uh, liquid. Yep. Put a little liquid on the buff and then yep. you know, hey, it's shinier than doing my hand. A lot of guys that do it that way. <sighs> Man, that makes a mess. It does. Holy freak out. cow. Mess. We get dirty. <laughs> I keep, I, no. I can't even fathom. I had a guy that bought uh, a bunch of our Time to Shine aluminum polish the other week. He was going to do the same thing. And literally it? soaked his buff in it because he thought that's how it worked. Oh. I felt terrible when he messaged me and he's like, it was a picture of him just slot full. <laughs> we can laugh about it now. He's probably going to get mad you if he but listens I mean, to these podcasts. It's, it's not funny that that happened, but like. I just can imagine that image. Just, it's just like you fire it up and it just. <laughs> oh man! What just happened? Like, yeah, that would have been absolutely miserable. Soaked it in it. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's rough. Yes. So completely um, soaked. <laughs> I was looking to try to figure this out. I'm talking to my buddy, my best friend Matt, and he had just gotten in a truck a little a couple years before that as well. And he's like, "Man, I'll watch these videos on YouTube. This guy named DC." DC Super Shine. Dennis, yeah. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, I'll, I'll watch these videos. And he's like, just go watch that. You'll figure it out. I'm like, yeah. okay. And so like, that, I looked up on YouTube and I found that guy and looked him up. I'm like, oh, uh, okay. I, I guess I just put this on here and go back and forth. <laughs> so that's what I did. I put it on the tank and went back and forth. I was like, hey, 
that looks pretty good. Like, look how I made it shiny. All yep. right. And uh, and that was in July of 16. And then I got bit by the bug. That was the that was the polishing bug. I started polishing long before that. Yep. Doing, you know, stuff on dad's truck. Sure. He paid me when I was a kid. Like, when I was 14, I wanted a paintball gun. He was like, 10 bucks a wheel. Chop, chop. I was like, all right. So that's where your pricing comes from. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Heritage prices. Heritage Locked prices. <laughs> that's my. That's been my biggest issue for the longest time. Keen has been hammering me lately. Like yeah. I'm way below industry standard on my pricing. Yes. And it's just because I've been polishing for 21 years. I'm so used to 21 year ago pricing. Right. And the industry just isn't. It's that hard way to anymore. change. Yeah. Product has over doubled in the oh, last six yeah. months. It's like it's we are crazy. drowning in product. Like yeah. Like, what, what do you think you were paying for a bottle of polish when you were doing it back in the day? So we talked about this today yeah. in the shop. Like, I used to buy the Blue Magic tubs. Oh, yeah, yeah. The the one-gallon yeah. tubs or whatever they were. The I think it was a one-gallon tub. Right. They were 45 bucks at Fleet Farm. I mean, <laughs> like, what do you think they are today? And I, I hand-polished for my first three years before I ever grabbed a buffer. So it's one thing I don't really talk about a whole lot. Uh -huh. But it's one of those things that, like, that's where I started. I just hand polished. Yeah. And then the buddy that I worked with at the truck wash was like, you know, my dad has a buffer and a bunch of guys know how to run buffers. Like, let me show you how to do this. I learned how to do it. Let's do it together. I so love when I started that today. started the business together and literally I why anybody paid me to hand polish those first three years, I have no <laughs> idea. But we were growing a business. Because they didn't want to. Hand polish. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> it. And it looked better than it did. Yep. So most people were paying it for just a hand polish. It was crazy. Crazy! I, uh, I looked through them pictures today with you guys, and it was like I can't believe people paid me to do that. <laughs> like I compared from where we were then to where we are now, it's not even in the same ballpark. But right. I started with Blue Magic, forty-five dollar tub. It would last me uh, like two months, three months. Really? <laughs> yeah, we. It's quite a bit. You didn't need a lot of Blue Magic to get the job yeah. done, but it was nasty to work with. Yeah. So you and I had talked about that. That I I started with Blue Magic. Right. You started with Bush. They were both. Working pro they both work really well. Yeah. Well, Blue Magic's a paste. Yeah. It was thick. Oh, it smelled oh, like straight ammonia. Yeah. So, yeah. like, if you didn't use it in a aerated area, like, you were going to die. Oh, really? That yeah. Has? I, I think used, the jug I mean, actually says use outdoors. Like, <laughs> I think it says do not use indoors. And it worked. That's it worked wild. really well. Yeah. And even in even when I met my wife, and she was just my, my girlfriend at the time, and she was working with me. We still used Blue Magic until probably six, seven years in before we finally switched to. I want to say we used. Oh, what was your first liquid? First liquid we used was White Diamond. Oh, really? But then I found the only thing I could get it to work on was Diamond Plate. <laughs> white Diamond Plate? <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. I'm like, White why Diamond only works on a White Diamond Plate. <laughs> now, now at, the, at the time, I didn't realize, like, I'm sure it worked better because going over the diamonds was building more heat. Right. If I'd have scrubbed harder and faster back then, maybe it would have worked better on wheels. Yeah. But I didn't realize like diamond plate scrubbing across it built up more heat and it, that's probably why it was working. I haven't used a ton of white diamond. Is it more the consistency like Lumi? Yeah. No, white diamond's like straight no. liquid. Yeah, it's oh. like water. Oh, it's like water. It's, oh, it's, a lot of it's like our time to shine stuff only, okay. I feel like it's even more liquidy yet. Oh yeah. No, oh, really. Yeah, it's wow, it super. Separate either. Straight yeah, water. theirs doesn't separate either. Wow. Well, it does a little bit if a you little, leave it on the shelf. Like but once you shake it up, you're good. Yeah, yeah. You're good for a while. Like, like, like mine, you got to shake it in between wheels. Yeah. 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 yeah like there's hardly any salt or solids in it. It's right. a lot of wax. I feel like, and yeah. I feel like that's why it didn't scrub all that great. But then we ended up using um, a couple of the other big name brands for a while. Mm -hmm. And um, then we ended up getting hooked up with a, a company for a few years, and right. um, that's kind of when that's when I ran you and I ran into each yeah, other when you started when you were had a booth set up at the show. Yep, we were working uh, with a company for a few years, and you had um, if you know you know. I think you, <laughs> <laughs> if you don't, you know. Um, I think what really got you and I close together was I think you bought a couple bottles of product at the show. No, so at the show you after the show. Yeah, you guys were out at the show. Oh yeah, we released it and we sold out. It sold out first yeah. day. Oh yeah, it was crazy. It was quick. I was gonna buy a bottle the first day, thing I've and ever then seen I was like, life. "No, I'll get one, you know, tomorrow, or whatever. No big deal." And it was gone. And it was gone. And um, so I ordered some from you in that, like, in July when I started trying to figure it out, and I was like, "I need some products." And so I told my dad, "I was like, 
you trust me the money to buy you know some of these extra products to polish your trucks up he's like ah oh, sure yeah and so i ended up making i called you and i made an order for about 500 bucks yep. and it was essentially like a well-built weekender kit a starter kit yeah yeah a well-built starter kit yep and um it had a few things in it one i was trying to do stainless yeah uh, i remember i was doing that and i was in yep. and you guys had pulled me at, at this point already before i was even buying anything from you you had pulled me into that uh, chat group on Instagram. Oh, that's right. We had a, a little, it was a little, uh, you know, team group. I mean, it was a, it was a, it was a polishers group. It was a polishers group. Yeah. We tried to get away from the Facebook polishers group because yeah. we had a lot of sack swinging. Yeah. And we started like an Instagram. It was really small at first it and was, then it blew did, up really did it quick. Blow up? A bunch of people got added it and it, just, oh, really? it, it got messy, which is why Apparently most of us it. pulled out. Yeah. 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 And so at first it was just a, this small little group of polishers, probably eight of us in there. Yep. Uh, one of them was, uh, the owner of the polish company, yep. um, of the, the manufacturer, yep. like you, and had a bunch of, and had a few other big name polish in there because Pete was in there. Yep. And that's when I was like trying to do stainless and you and Pete were like kind of giving me tips back and forth. Yeah. Like, Oh, adjust your pattern. And then I showed, I, it was a stainless panel on my, on the side of my bunk. And it had uh, scratches that took a razor yep. blade to take the IFTA sticker off. Yep, I remember and, that. And uh, I was trying to get it out, and, and you guys were like, well, first you're going to have to sand it. And uh, and then if you don't want to sand it or whatever, you know, and like I was like, I'm getting these white lines. And I showed you what I was using. It was a it was a pleated, untreated white buff <laughs> with black, with a black compound. Yep. Or no. I remember that. No, it was a, I was cutting it with something else. But yeah, anyway, I was Brown, finishing. I think. I think I was I think finishing. you were cutting it with Tripoli. Yeah. Oh, Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was kind of a Tripoli. But like, first off, Tripoli doesn't work great on stainless. And then I was coloring it with a blue bar from the bush that we right. had. That's right. That's right. And a pleated, and a pleated cotton. Yeah. And you guys were like, no. <laughs> <laughs> like that product doesn't work like that. You can't do that. It was building. Was it building too much heat? The uh, blue and the cotton. I believe it was versus yeah. the flannel. I like, believe it was building you, too you much. You guys heat. were like, you need to get a flannel so you can do that you know, yep. the right way. And. uh so yeah, I, I called you and I made an order and it came like super quick and I got the product and I was like, okay, the liquid, I got the liquid polish and I tried it out. I was like, well, this stuff's weird. Like, cause I'm used to bush yeah. and then I get something that has like no abrasives in it. Right. Like it, it was a finished polish. Yeah, it was a finished polish. Yeah, it was, it was a, a true show polish at yeah. the time. Yep. It was a true finish polish and I got it and I was like, it's oily. But then it like dries like baby powder. I'm like, I don't even, I don't know. It wipes off really easy. And that's like, what really got you and I close was that it started with that conversation. Yeah. But you and I got a lot closer, I feel like, during that. And that's a whole separate conversation we won't have on video because right. like it brings up a whole topic about value and people that are social <laughs> yeah, media right. and not social media and what your <clears throat> following is and what your value is outside of that. But right. um, you had sent me a video of testing three different products. Mm -hmm. um, to Mojo, all this Bush. All right, I think it was Mojo at the time, which is now Roadworks. That's true. Yeah. Actually, you tested four of them. I did, no. Was it three? It was three. So Mojo, Bush, Bush and, and product, product X. <laughs> <laughs> if you know, you know. <laughs> so the, those three. Yeah. And then the, th the the concept of that was I wanted to see which three, which three waxes would hold up. Like, how do they hold up in the sunlight? Now, this was a tank that had gotten wrecked, so it just sat outside, so it yeah. didn't have any, it didn't go anywhere, and it wasn't on a truck. Sure. But I did three panels, I did three test panels, I taped them off in sections. Yeah. I used three, se no, I used six separate rags. Yeah. I used three separate rags to apply it. So there was no cross-contamination. Yep, and three yeah. separate rags to take it off. And this sprung up a whole conversation about mm. how someone like yourself, mm -hmm. there is no dollar amount and no social media, Cloud. I'm air quoting for those of you that can't yeah. see, um, I'm air quoting the, there's no social media clout number right. that can evaluate true unbiased test. A true unbiased yeah. test, like the value that comes out of that. And for me, when we started creating our own products, people like yourself are the, yeah. are the people I leaned on. Right. I leaned on you, Casey, Detail Dave, um, Independent Industries, Zach Tuckman, um, Keenan, Zach. Um, yeah, all your Matt close Davis, guys. My close guys that right. I wanted to know and get actual real feedback from. Right. Not guys that were just gonna blow smoke. 
Yeah. Like I wanted guys that were actually going to test stuff and try it out. And if it wasn't good, tell me it wasn't good. Even Springer, he told me a number of times, he was like, dude, your product just isn't there. He's like, keep going. Like it's yeah. not working what I'm looking for. Right. Make it better. <clears throat> we made a lot That's of adjustments and a lot of changes as we went along. Right. But was his more on the Springer side? Was more on the detail the side? The detailing side, yeah. yeah. When we got into the detailing products, he helped a it's lot with that. It's good to have somebody like that, though. But when we were doing our bars and compounds and stuff mm -hmm. and our buffs, I, I reached out to Casey. Yeah. Casey and I have gotten really close over the years, and him it's, and I. It's always fun when I. Lot. It's always fun when I get a phone call like, I got this new bar. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Do you now? Try this out. Yeah. Like, I know you do a lot of high end stuff and you over you overshoot a lot of stuff. Everything. So it's nice to send you stuff because when I. I shouldn't say just when I, when Keenan and I mm -hmm. are in the shop and we're testing stuff and trying to see how to get to that next level, you're one of those guys that I know you can perform that next level. And if I tell you how we're doing it, mm -hmm. you can usually replicate it. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to be able to do that. Attempt to anyway. But <laughs> like I said, that whole conversation stemmed from there's no amount of social media club that can get you that kind of information. Mm -hmm. Now, lo and behold. Yeah, no, <laughs> you, you've become a, a TikTok juggernaut, I guess, and it's like, uh, now it's a double whammy. Like, like, I don't feel like you're famous to each of them. Listen, I'm <laughs> I'm sitting at like 20-some thousand, and you're at 400-some thousand, yeah. and you're doing all right. Like, yeah, doing all right, yeah. When you post up on TikTok, like... It does well. It, it instantly translates on my end into right. sales. Like, I see sales on our website every day mm. that you post up. So when I see your, your coupon code come through, I'm like... All right, what's Steve post today? I need to go check this out. And make sure head over there and check it out. Make sure, uh, make sure I'm supporting. Was my buddy. it good? <laughs> Was it? I don't know. Like we got rid of a whole lot of dead inventory that we've been trying to liquidate out of our yeah. sales section. We're gonna do that again then. So that was nice. It was yeah. really nice because we've been trying to. What was the thing that sold the most? You know. Uh, you know, we are almost out of the degreaser. Yeah. We have like. What is it, Keenan? Two bottles left in the shop? Wow. Uh, uh, yeah. I think two. we got two bottles left in the shop. Wow. So like got some buckets. Not the uh, not, yeah, we not got the some five gallon buckets left, but not the all purpose. The degreaser. Yeah, the all purpose. Okay, okay, yeah. The APC. I got you. Um we literally have two bottles left in the uh in the two. inventory. I know what the um, hand cleaner actually went pretty well. Yeah. But we have got twenty cases of that left upstairs somewhere. For the price? Of what you had, like I'm selling it at what I bought it for. Yeah, which is I mean, ridiculous. I'm, I'm dumping it. Yeah, like I'm trying to get rid of dead inventory because we're trying room. to <laughs> trying to recoup some of that money. Yeah, to keep putting into our inventory. Right. Um, it's not that I don't want to sell somebody else's product, just not that one. Yeah. Mm, you get your own product now. Yeah. I'd rather push push. You guys all. don't have room anymore. You don't have room in the well in there too have something else that doesn't sell especially yeah, I, anything doesn't sell i didn't get a chance to show you today either but yeah. we we're transitioning oh, yeah. over to our new building next door yeah um for the product sales side ellen and katie are going to be moving over to the other building oh really um we've been working on building inventory hard for the better part of three four years we've been building our own product inventory for uh two years now i think mm -hmm. and we we honestly strive as hard as we can for customer service. We want we want our shipping to be fast and we want our people to be taken care of. Right. When we have somebody reach out to us that they have damaged product, we file the claim, it gets rejected, we still send product out. Um, when you place an order, we ship within, try to ship within the same day, unless right. it's ordered late on a Friday, then it'll ship out on Monday. Yeah. But we want our shipping to be as fast as possible. COVID hurt us last year because yeah. the post office was just holding stuff forever. But usually when you place an order with us, you see it within a couple of days. And we needed to build inventory in order for that to happen. Right. This year we kind of got screwed on buffs. We kind of got screwed on um, <laughs> that was foam cannons. A lot of stuff has gone out of stock, so we haven't been able to help out as much. Mm -hmm. um, but it just kind of it just kind of is what it is. So we've been muscling it out and making it work. Right. Um, was that on your end or on the camera's end? Uh, that is the screens. End. Okay. So we can just swap out. I got an extra battery for cool. that over here. Um, but yeah. that's just the monitor. Low battery. Yeah. Yeah. It's just the monitor. Good. Um, but we have three quarters of a million dollars in inventory upstairs, which you yeah. saw most of it when you went up there that's last okay. two weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if you saw the other building, we have pallets of product that were in the awesome. other building. So we're working on getting it insulated, 
heated and cooled over there and we're going to be moving Ellen and Katie over there and hoping to build another three quarters of a million, if not another million in inventory so that we don't go out of stock on a lot of stuff. We stock everything from full face respirators to foam cannons to all of our detailing products, right. um, compounds. Put them on the right, dial. What were we talking about at the end? Is it recording? Yeah. I don't know, you're on some tangent about how you had the best shipping and this is all your podcast. Uh, <laughs> we don't have the best shipping, but we tried. Um, are we back? Yeah. But are we, we, okay. um, we definitely strive for fast shipping. We want it to be as fast as well, possible. Well, Ellen does a, does a killer job for me. I have never, I've been very fortunate to never have a package loss. Very few broken bars. And if I order it before noon, like it usually tends to get out that day. We, we try to. Ellen and, but I'm special. Ellen, well, no, you're not special. Every, <laughs> everybody gets that no, no. treatment if I'm possible. I'm special. <laughs> everybody gets that treatment when possible. Like, we, we try la, 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 la. as much as possible. <laughs> That's what we aim for. Yeah. Well, uh, it does, she does, it doesn't she, always work that way. Right. Um, some days but, we're just so slam busy we can't. Right. But, but, like, for the most part, it usually gets out pretty quick. I usually see it in one to three days. Like, no, usually not one day, but, like, Less than four days on average. Um, and, you know, I it just, it's one of the reasons that I, it's just, just another reason to add on that I buy from you guys because. Most polishers don't keep inventory. Yeah. And when you yeah. order, when you order from some of these other companies, we, yeah. and it takes a month to get it. Oh my God. And you needed it this weekend yeah. or you needed it next weekend and they don't have it because I they ordered. don't stock it. They make it right. to order. A lot of guys struggle with that. Yeah. So right. I try to stock more than I probably need to. Right. Because when somebody calls on a Monday and says they need it by a Friday, we get it to them by Friday. Right. And that's worked out really well for us. Exactly. Might not work out for everybody else, but it works out I for us. Back when I got started, I ordered a bunch of stuff from you and then the other company of the, the product that we were you were dealing in at that time, they had a Thanksgiving sale and they had like a real good deal or whatever. And I was like, oh, okay, well, you know, pick some up or whatever. It was two weeks. Yep. It was two weeks. I ordered it. It was two weeks to get it. I was like, wow. I was like, okay. That yep. sucks. I remember you hit me up because you're like, uh, I'm out, but I have some order. Can you hook me up a little bit? And I'm like, I'd love to help you out, but right. you didn't buy it for me. Right. Like, yeah. I'm not the company. So, no, like, I can't. Can't do nothing for you. Sorry. Right. Yeah. You can buy some more. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't run a lot of sales, yeah. but we keep a lot of inventory. Yeah. I don't run a lot of sales because we have a lot of inventory. Just going to use that coupon code, Summershot. <laughs> <laughs> but we do, we just don't do a lot of sales because it, it chews into my bottom line and my bottom line is what's building our inventory right. right now. I mean, I'm literally reinvesting every dollar we bring in to our inventory. Yeah. So that's it, nice. It, it's hard to run sales on my end because we just, we need the money to help build inventory. Mm. You can only do so much with it. Excuse my yawning. I yawn all the time anyway, but it doesn't help that it's what going on 10 o'clock. Is it? Uh, it's nine something. Yeah. And uh, and I got up at three o'clock this morning. And this is our there. second time shooting. This is our second time shooting this. So yeah. that's even that's even better. So what other what other uh, bullet points we got? Uh, what do you primarily work on? Like so, okay. So primarily it's like 50-50 for me. It's kind of all over the board. But like a lot of trucks, uh, you know, polishing semis, lo local stuff, farming. Like farming's big in our area, so a lot of farm trucks, and then like other locals. Obviously, I was in trucking for a long time, so I have like pretty good. Um, reach into that and then word of mouth has been great so probably 50% trucks and then a lot of loose parts um, in terms of just everything wheel car wheels um, it's it's every it's literally everything well car recently parts, you've gotten more famous for cast iron skillets <laughs> cast iron skillets cast iron skillets oh, God, if you so know me you know me from Polished cast iron skillets. You know me from TikTok. <laughs> yep. You know me from cast iron skillets. Uh, uh, yep. Yep. I got, that was kind of a happy accident, I suppose. Yep. You know, it, it did grow my following and gave me an opportunity to... Um, it was actually a lot of fun. I was doing it because... Don't say that. No. People are going to think that I was doing polishing it cast fun. iron skillets are fun. No. That's not They're the not. I haven't done one. <laughs> Making videos. <laughs> Of polishing odd stuff is fun, uh, so yeah, I did a I did a little eight inch, and we talked about that in the previous one that you guys didn't need to hear. Uh, but uh, I, I bought a little eight inch skillet, and I was like, I saw a bunch of skillet videos on TikTok. And I was like, these are doing well. I'll yep. 
maybe I'll, you know, jump on that little, you know, wagon and yep. see how that goes. So I bought an eight inch skillet. And it blew up. And I polished it and it, yeah, it did really well. So, and like I said, that net. A lot of it was like heaters at first. Oh like, yeah. I can't oh, believe that's what you, you destroy want. cast iron. Oh yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> it's wonderful. Thousand comments. Oh, I can't believe you did that. Your grandma's going to kill you. It was, oh, people were upset. I was like, just, just keep coming. Yeah. Just keep it coming. It's yeah. fine. And so, uh, yeah, that was a, that was a banger. Um, and like, so that one net me like 40,000 followers. Jeepers, man. Something like that. Like, I was at 40,000 followers when that happened. I think it was 20,000 from that video. And then it got picked up by another guy who had a du did a duet. And TikTok was pushing duets at that time. That went 7 and million. So that one went, yeah, that one went 7 million. And that net me another 50 or 60,000 followers. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I kind of, I doubled down on cast iron skillets at the time. People wanted them. So I started doing them for customers. And then uh, you and I had a long conversation. You called me out of the blue one day and you're like, hey, we need to talk about product and like what you're doing. And I want to make sure that you're like, okay, like you have your bases covered. So, like, so this that, is that, one thing I wanted to, this is one thing I wanted to talk about in the last time we recorded this and it didn't work. Yeah. Um, I wanted to tell you the reason I did that was. Cover your butt. Well, no, <laughs> no, that wasn't it at all. Yeah. Was I hold you in high regard mm -hmm. and I see a possibility, you know, the water. Sure. I see a possibility oh, for, um, <laughs> I, I saw a lot of possibility yeah. for another good guy to do something good for the industry. Right. Was as you were coming up, Mm -hmm. I wasn't trying to just take along our product because at the end of the day, you, yeah. know, you know, I don't care what product you use. Right. I appreciate that you use our stuff and you yeah. promote our stuff. Make good stuff and I'll use it. But at the end of the day, <laughs> like if you find something else works better, right. I'm okay with that. If you tell me, I'll try to buy it and stock it so you buy it from me anyways. <laughs> but nonetheless. Because like then I get it in three days. <laughs> <laughs> right. But I, I do appreciate that you do that. But I wanted to see you give back to the industry in the yeah. same way. And be able to, I knew as your cast iron thing went up, eventually yeah. it was going to wear off. Mm -hmm. And I wanted you to still be able to transition that into your truck stuff. Right. And be able to help an industry that I've been struggling to help. Right. Because it's so much for the very few of us that are actually giving back and helping the industry. Mm -hmm. Because the industry was dying. It yeah. was a few old guys that were just not Which giving anybody anything. Right. And now there's a bunch of young guys that just weren't there. And I'm not trying to take credit for all these young guys coming in. Right. I think it's a, I think it's a group effort kind of, you know, it is, it's like the more social media becomes big and the more people that post stuff on social media about polishing, yeah. the more people find it. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, wait a minute. I didn't know that existed. The more people that are like, I'd like to try that. Right. And, and one of the, there's ten. good info out there between mm -hmm. yourself and myself. Yeah. You've got TikTok covered. Pretty good. I've I got YouTube. To, I need to easily. get on YouTube and start putting more on YouTube, whether it's on your channel or my channel. I'd love to Either collab way. with you on my channel. Yeah, hundred percent. I need I need to do it because a, it would, another revenue stream, which would take a little weight off my back. And for me, my YouTube channel does well, but you don't get enough content. But I, I just can't put all content all the time. Yeah. Like I wish I could. It's just a struggle. Be so you come up here like once every two weeks. Yeah, <laughs> <two minutes. laughs> that'd be great. <laughs> If, can you just pop on over? If we can, between, why don't you, why don't you between Keenan and I, when we get the shop settled and we yeah. have some good guys in there and I can get out of the yeah. shop a little more, I, I plan to get back in here. I have a whole list of videos that I need to make happen. Right. Just, I haven't been able to make happen because it's just, busy. It's, it's hard. Yeah. It's really Like it blows hard. my mind how much you do in a day. Yeah. Like watching, like watching, like you try to keep up with everything that's going on on the retail side and then on like also polishing at the same time and then taking messages and calls like pfft. I try not to micromanage as much as possible. Yeah. But at the same time, like there still okay. is some level of micromanaging that happens to make sure it all keeps moving. Right. You gotta be in there to have hands on it. It's a very you can't just let it run itself. It's a very tuned cog, if you will. For now. For now. <laughs> like, the fires are few and far between. And it's not even so much that. Like most days like Keenan can handle in the shop by himself. Mm -hmm. I don't want to make him do that, but he can do that. And yeah. like yesterday, I just needed to be in the office for a day. Yeah. I needed to get caught up because I'm leaving tomorrow for a truck show out in Nebraska. I needed to get caught up. 
Keenan didn't complain about it. He just got it done. He made it happen. Yeah. Ellen, she manages the office. Nine days out of ten, everything goes around and nothing changes. Nothing needs to happen. But there's that one day out of ten that I need to be in here and yeah. put out a couple fires and make sure stuff keeps moving. So it's a horse and a half piece. Right. I mean, it's yeah, just, so that's the thing. Like having all that going on and then taking phone calls and... You know whatever else is going on. It's it's impressive. That right you now, get that much done. There's 50 text messages I need to respond to Good from today degree. that I haven't had a chance to respond to today, and then I haven't even opened my emails today. I haven't opened my Instagram. I didn't. Re- I did respond to my Instagram. I didn't respond to Facebook, mm-hmm. and I did log into TikTok for a minute just because we were talking about it. and I wanted to check it out and see. Oh, yep, still at twenty thousand. Yep. <laughs> But I needed to check my messages because people do message me on there as well, which right. is weird because I don't, I'm not very active on there. And I should be, Zach was up me sideways about getting in early. I right. didn't. He got in early. You still managed to pass him. You figured out the algorithm and yeah. just pushed hard and it worked out really well. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you pushed me pretty hard to start putting out more content and doing it. I, I, I feel like I can put out a two hour long YouTube video, mm-hmm. or I can put out a 10 minute that YouTube video out, yeah. and I can put out good, good content. I feel like right to put out TikTok content. I feel like takes longer than That's my YouTube content. Wild. Yeah. And mind blowing. I don't know if maybe it's all in your head. I'm just looking at it differently and it's all in my head. Right. But yeah, yeah. I mean, it's one of those things like, like I was saying earlier, uh, I think you should just do as far as growing your following on TikTok and having, you know, the, the time to shine and, and all that stuff. I think that one of the things you should do is a vlog style. Set your thing to 60 seconds in the morning when you get here. Just walk out in the shop with that thing on and be like, all right, here's what we got going on today. We got to do this and this or whatever. And like go yeah. up the stairs and like, who wants a bottle? You know, who needs some of this? And it's this much, thing like, is like little you, stuff like that. You saw how our day is today. Being yeah, today here all day. was kind of, I feel like today was an easy day. But at the same time, right. it's hectic. Yeah. Like it's organized chaos. Right. Like we had three trucks in and out. And mm-hmm. yeah, there was a little break in between because they were trying to organize getting right. all here. Yeah. But at the same time, in between, I was messaging people back, taking phone calls. Even mm-hmm. while we were working on it, I was taking phone calls. Sorry. Right. Yeah, I'm going to get you with those. Yep. You got it. <laughs> but it's like... Um, it's just, it, it's a nonstop cycle most days. Right. Like if I, I need a media manager. Yeah. And you and I talked about that today is at some point in time, you'll need one as well. Yeah. And I'm fortunate enough. I have enough people working in the office and in the shop that I can manage my own media some right. days, but at the same time, like there's going to need to be a lot more at yeah, some point. It's, in it's time. crazy. It's, it's wild. I can't, I can't get, I can't respond to half the messages I get. And I'm like, and it got to a point where I just like kind of like threw my hands up. Like I can't. Like, because if you're... I try to respond to all of them, it's so hard. That is all of hard. Instagram, yeah. Facebook, Facebook business and YouTube. That's literally, a that's why job. I don't put a whole lot on TikTok right now is because it's like, do I need another one? Do I add one more stream to it that I have the to now respond to? The like on TikTok, the only way they can message you is if you're friends with them. Yeah. But so even the comments, people... like I respond to oh, almost yeah. all comments. Yep. It's hard. And that's hard when a video blows up. Like I had oh, one video yeah. that got like 400 or 500,000 views. I still went through, commented on every comment that was like relevant, that needed something like, yeah. Hey, what did, what was it that you used there? And right. it was like, Oh man, I need to go through and right and do that. Yeah. Yep. Those are the comments aren't terrible. Um, because it's usually a one, like a one time you respond to it and they get their answer. Yeah. Uh, but like messages like Instagram and you, message somebody back on Instagram, you open that can of worms. Yeah. Like, and then it's an ongoing conversation. Open. Yeah. I can show yep. you hundreds yeah. of Instagram DMs that are like, hey, I got a quick question for you. And I'm like, uh, oh, yeah. all right, hit me up. Yeah. And then it's, bam, conversation. book. And it's, I have no problem with that. Like, I try to respond right. to everybody, but at the same time, it's like, it's, it turned from a quick question to a, I'm going to be spending the next two hours back and uh, forth responding with, to these. With one person. One person. Of 50. Let alone 50. And so like you yeah. go in there at night, at midnight or something, you know, you got a little free time and you respond to 25 of those. You wake up the next morning and it's 25 conversations yeah. that are now open and you're like. That I now have to huh. sort out. 
Yeah. Because it's I like thought, I thought I was right. making headway. In fact, I went backwards. <laughs> yeah. Because now I got twenty five more. Yeah. And twenty five from yesterday. So it's like, I, I feel bad, but everybody's like, "Don't you remember what she said to me yesterday?" I'm like, oh, <sighs> "I need to go back and reread it." Yeah. Because I talked to a hundred people since then, That's and I feel crazy. terrible. Yeah. That I have to go back and reread it, but at the same time, it's like. But everybody wants to get famous. <laughs> I can't. I cannot even fathom the people that have like tens of millions of followers. I now know why they have media managers. Well, yeah, you have to. And when How everybody's like, not? they sold out, and somebody's responding for them, it's like, dude, they just can't keep up. They can't keep up. Like it's a lot. It's a yeah. lot more than you'd think. And I'm not. Oh, yeah. I'm not looking for sympathy and I'm, in and any like, way. We're, like consider like I would say that we are still small. Yeah. Like I, you've been growing your following for a long time. Yeah. So it's very loyal. Yeah. And like it's dense yep. in the numbers yep. and like but yeah it's it's crazy and i got popular on instagram when instagram was first growing right and in the same way that you you did really well with yeah. tiktok while it was still growing i 46 i think i'm at forty six thousand on instagram yeah that's Which solid nice, for a metal polisher in a yep. niche market like metal yep. polishing isn't for everybody not forty six thousand people that's what i mean <laughs> maybe it is maybe it I mean, is yeah depending but, on what they're looking you know what they're looking for but yeah like it's a niche. But it's even TikTok, niche. like, yeah. you've got... It was the skillets. How many hundred thousand? 470. 470,000? Like, yeah. they're not all no. going to polish something Most tomorrow. of them, uh, most of them on TikTok... A lot of them buy TikTok, detailing products for their cars and trucks. Or most whatever. of them on TikTok are there for the satisfaction. Yeah. They enjoy watching the process. That's what I mean. It's like yeah. that satisfaction market You're turn is that into shiny? a whole lot better yeah. than yeah, yeah, yeah. the polishing side of it. Oh, like, yeah. teaching somebody how to polish. Right. And that was my niche was Yeah, like on Instagram you can't you can see the before and after, yeah, but you can't watch it being done. Yep. Yeah. So, so the YouTube thing for me was just way helping better. somebody out. And honestly, right. my YouTube stemmed from people asking me a hundred questions and I was like the easier way to answer this is to show you. Mm-hmm. And then my first videos weren't like actually showing you like it showed you watching me do it. Right. But it wasn't me breaking it down and doing it. Like, I didn't know how to edit videos back yeah. then. I just Voice over go stuff. pro on my forehead and just, right. this is me starting. Make sure you wear a respirator and go. And go, <laughs> yeah. Put your, put your, put your respirator on. Uh huh. Yeah. That was with exactly. A, with a GoPro. It. You're like, what's he saying? And like, uh-huh. you're talking while you're grinding. It's like, I don't know. But and he's doing I'm, a nice job. <laughs> and now I'm redoing a lot of those videos yeah. and people are like, oh, that's what you meant. I'm like, well, the process changed a bit too now, but. Right. But still. It's better than it was. Right. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's definitely interesting. Uh, I was going to say something about TikTok and I don't remember what it was. So that's how it goes. It's my life. So what's been probably the highlight of your career so far? Sitting in this room with you. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> 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 I don't know. Uh, <laughs> highlight of my career. That's terrible. I don't know. Like, I don't know that there's like a highlight, like one thing that's been, I don't know. That's hard to say. Like, TikTok's kind of cool. Like, that's kind of a highlight is like growing up, following that big, knowing that people like to watch what you make, your content. So oh, that's, oh. that's pretty cool. Like, oh, oh. um, when that first started off, I was doing like uh, oddball stuff. I was polishing oddball things. Sure. And I have a whole list on the wall I know. of all these random things to polish. I can't wait to do those. But I'm so covered in like. You know things what gets to me hard? Like the one thing. <laughs> Sitting in this wait. room with you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I worded that wrong. You know what gets me in the feels? Uh, when guys walk in now into my office yes. and they see my polished railroad spike and they're like, oh, did you polish a railroad spike because Steve Summers did it? Uh, I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> nope. I polished railroad spikes before Steve Summers was even polishing. Nope. No, you didn't. I did it before it was cool. <laughs> <laughs> it was always cool. It's just now mainstream cool. Yeah, now it's mainstream. Yeah, it's like, mainstream cool. Yours caught on. Yeah. Mine just sat on my desk. Yeah, mine did millions of views and now everybody's like, oh, a railroad spike. There was a... I'll, I'll give him some credit in this video. Uh, he's no longer with us. He took his own life, but um, it was a really good polisher that had stopped by here and it wasn't for training. It was just 
a buddy stopping by yeah. and him and I got to talking about railroad spikes one day and I have a railroad tracks right here. Yeah. And we definitely did not go pick them up no. off the railroad tracks because mm -hmm. that's a federal offense. We right. would definitely not do that. Uh, but somehow acquired one. <laughs> but somehow. <laughs> somebody, we, somebody else stopped by and yeah, dropped one With off. one. Yeah. 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 And uh, him and I got to talking about it. And um, I said, you know, one of the other polishers in the polishers group at that time had said that you could polish a steel railroad spike. And I'm like, it's not possible. That's wild. And he's like, dude, I've polished them all the time. I'm like, how? He's like, they're just like stainless steel. They're not hard. Right. I literally watched him sand, shape, and polish a railroad spike for probably the better part of two to two and a half hours. Wow. And that thing was absolute perfection when he was done. I mm -hmm. mean, this thing was hammered. So I decided he did a full polish. The entire thing was uh -huh. polished when he was done. And I decided that looked cool, but it was cooler to just do two sides right. and leave the other two sides, the original, how wow. you found it finished. Yeah. Cause then I'm like the people that are like, Oh, that's just Chrome dipped. Yeah. Now you can see it's not Chrome dipped. Yeah. Like for sure. If you Chrome dipped it, even the rough side would be shiny. Right. But it's not. That's not. So it was kind of cool to learn from somebody that something I thought wasn't possible was it possible. Blows, it blows my mind that you didn't think that was possible. Like, that's interesting to me. I'm trying to remember when I polished my Because now I polished like, everything. That, that was the one that, that definitive moment for me that was like, oh, maybe I should try everything. Everything. <laughs> like, Every, I got a whole pile of what, stuff up there. What metal can I not polish? <laughs> yeah. And like, there's some things out there that don't want to be polished. Yeah. Yeah. Like you still get something poor, out of them. Like usually. poor cast aluminum. Oh yeah. <laughs> you can keep that. Yeah, that's probably gotta be one of the worst ones. I got like, no use for that at all. It's so hard. Not even a little bit. Yeah. You're like, why is this still gray? Um <laughs> <you know? laughs> But uh Yeah, like there's just it's it's wild that uh why is this still gray? That's pretty good. That and that's good. that's the truth though. Like it's accurate. You you had that come across, you know, from time to time. You get something that's really, I don't even know what it's made out of. It's I really want to say accurate. tin, but like not even. It's really accurate. It's, it is. You get, you're like, no. <laughs> uh, but yeah. So yeah, that's uh, like, I guess one of the highlights right now is probably, you know, blowing up on, blowing TikTok. up on TikTok and doing that. And for what it's worth. Maybe, oh. Uh, I really hope you continue that successful streak because like yeah you're doing a lot of good for the industry you're putting out a lot of good right i hope that keeps growing for you uh i think one of the highlights might have been when you called me and said that that sparked one of the biggest internet orders you guys had had yeah yeah we had um, the tiktok ad i don't remember it was a two or a three thousand dollar order i don't know it was a lot I don't remember, but it was a big one. And was, I was yeah. like, it came through and I, I looked at Ellen. I'm like, this is our biggest what? online order yet. <laughs> yeah. And, and then I saw one, a coupon order. code. Sunshine. Sunshine. <laughs> like, huh. All right, well, that's then. neat. <laughs> I guess that worked out. Yeah. Uh, keep him on the friends list. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, like I said, when we're done uh, with this, I'll, I'll have that conversation uh, with you with uh, why... Right. Uh, why I, I, I don't care about social media clout. Like I'm not right. gonna hire in a bunch of people just because they have social media clout. Like, it doesn't seem to work out. I, I see, I've seen when a they, lot of Because when you're done with them, they'll move to the next person. They'll move like, to the next person. Yeah. And you and I have built a friendship outside of polishing as well. Yeah. Like it's just. Yeah, oh for sure. I Family. I, you know. You've been at my house. Oh yeah. You were at my old house. Yeah. And I've been at my new house. Yeah. Like That's you, what I was saying today on that uh, post on Facebook. I was like, this dude, this is the guy that that I showed up his house, didn't know me from Adam. Like we talked on the internet and then like wakes up the next morning, sick as a dog. He's like, we're going to the hospital. When you get up, take a shower and meet me at the shop. Yep. Like you're leaving your house. Yeah. Like, I yeah. trusted you. Yep. So yep. it's a face. It's a trustworthy face. <laughs> For uh, those of you that are just listening to the podcast. It's not that trustworthy. It's not terrible. <laughs> I mean, it was trustworthy enough. Oh, the air conditioner caught up. Yeah. Interesting. It's nice in here now. That's quiet. <laughs> Uh, I don't know how much, uh, depending on how much audio editing we get to do, you guys will either hear or not hear that. Yeah. So Steve's we'll going to try and make his episode the best one. Yes. I'm an audio Nazi. He's shooting for it anyway. Yeah. I am. I am like, it's bad. <laughs> yeah. I get, I get like on our podcast, I get angry when yeah. the audio is not what I want it to be. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I'm I not, three I'm not that good at editing. Maybe. It's just... You get I what you get. Put it together. The content is... People listen to it. Like I said, right. there's a guy who does not want to be named, one of the bigger influencers in the mm-hmm. industry for motivational speaking. He told me, just put out content. That's it. You don't have to be great at editing. You don't have to be great at none of that stuff. You just keep putting out content. It shouldn't matter if you're actually trying to give out to the industry. It shouldn't matter if you have 10 views or 10 million views. Right. Just put out content because it's if every video helps one person, you're already ahead. Mm -hmm. So keep putting out content. Keep doing it. Right. Do what you can. So what other questions you got for me? And Gary Vee put pushes that quite a oh, bit yeah, too. Just does. put out content. Content, content, content. content, content, content. Even if it it's not matter. great, yeah. put out content. It doesn't matter what it is. Somebody will like it. It's more content. What's the most interesting thing you've polished? I know you... That's that's also really tough because like with all, with all the miscellaneous parts that I mm-hmm. get, like it's been rando stuff. I, did a I will say for me, it was the brake rotor. Really? Yeah. That was the most interesting thing. Honestly, I thought it was awesome. It was annoying. It was one of the... <laughs> 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 because as a polisher, yeah. I kept thinking like... Hmm. Will it? My truck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then I'm like, I don't want to maintain that. You can't. You can't. No. As soon as it gets wet and you wash it. Anything. Gone. Something about brake rotors in general, whatever that's made out of, um, the the steel is porous. Really? Yes. You can't keep that from rusting. That's why if you ever see a brake rotor on a car and like you take, you like, it's got big wheels on or whatever. My next one like, will be a powder coated set for sure. Yeah. You like you see it in like if it if the car sits there for fifteen minutes it gets rained on the rain spots are rusty on the rotor something about rotors they rust just instantly I mean they're steel right but how long have you had steel stuff sitting out here that's just now starting to get any kind of surface rust on it you know what I'm saying I don't let people touch it right don't what? touch it the brake rotor <laughs> rusted overnight in the garage that's accurate overnight yeah. Humidity? In, in the garage. High it was, humidity? It was winter. Oh. So low <laughs> yeah. humidity. Huh. Yeah. Overnight. With, like, with time to shine on it. I wiped wow. it down with liquid polish. That's a ton of wax. That's a ton of wax. It should not and rust. it still did. Still did. That's crazy. Yeah. Huh. So I was like, wow. That was insane. I've not tried it on a brand new rotor, but on a used rotor, like, the top hat, everything. Really? The whole thing. Just, whoosh, hmm. I was like, hmm, Interesting. And then That's we tried weird. to ceramic coat it, and it still did. Not as bad, but yeah, you still told me the ceramic coat didn't work all that great, huh? Didn't, didn't do it. Well, it steel. we think that it wasn't applied properly, so yeah. we want to do another test. Sure. We're going to do a different piece. We're not going to use a rotor. A rotor is silly. So the rotor for me was like cool. One of those that I thought it was the most interesting thing you've done. Probably my favorite thing was that custom stainless grill. Oh, do you yeah. remember that from like yes. 2017, probably? Yeah, I do. It's a. It was a 13 inch. Made out of schedule, I think schedule four. It was like a barbecue grill, right? Yeah. Yeah. It, he was a, uh, the guy that built it. That was it, cool. Yeah, that was stupid. <laughs> uh, the guy that built it was a pipeline, is, is a pipeliner. And he builds these all the time for the back of their rigs so that when they're out somewhere they can cook on them. You know what's not building cool stuff like that? Polish no, polishing company. <laughs> <laughs> we don't make any money. Pipeliners. <laughs> Pipeliners. Building grills. Yeah. And yeah, so it was like, it was a full custom grill. He started with a piece of, scrap stainless pipe from a job so it was stainless pipe Oof. raw this was good super stuff. raw oh it was good stuff good super quality. raw did that had a machine shop cut the side pieces which were like um they kind of like had a i don't even know what the shape would be um but anyway it round and they had little feet basically and then it had two by two stainless tubing across the bottom for that and all of that was raw the entire thing. None of it was made out of any polish. Wow. Well, yeah, all raw. And I sanded every inch of it and polished it. Wow. Well, all the way around on the tubes, everything. And that was a, I charged him 500 bucks for that. That should have been a lot more. But oh well, it was fun. So that leads into my next question Crazy. is, what's the biggest thing you got burnt on? I, like something you thought oh. was going to be super easy, but you were like, you quoted <sighs> it out and you were like way upside down on I'll bet you the biggest thing I got burned on was one of my first paying jobs. Really? Yeah. Oh, like, I think yeah. you may have told me this story. What a learning before. curve. Like, what a learning thing. I was polishing stuff, and I had polished wheels before, and I had polished uh, factory wheels before for, like, a vehicle. And a kid hits me up, local guy, local kid, and he's like, hey, man, 
I got some painted wheels on my 94 Trans Am. Ooh. They're five spoke. He sends mm. me a picture. I'm like, yeah, I can do those. I'll just st shoot some stripper on them. I'll strip the paint and then sand them and polish them. Piece of cake. They dip prime those. Uh huh. Yup. They sure do. Yeah. And it soaks in the metal. And it's not coming off. <laughs> it doesn't come out easy. I don't care how much stripper you put on <laughs> It's not come off. We it's in the pores. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then down in the corners where the cast is still rough. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. We ended up taking that off. Nothing. We ended, ended, up, time. ended up the 20. Oh, is it the 20? Is that going yeah. to Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. That's, That's why I said it in the corners. Okay. So the cast, down in the cast in the corners of it, like you were saying, it soaks in. And what we ended up using was, I think it was green Scotch Bright or red Scotch Bright uh, pads. Yeah. Put it with gloves on because it was like just fingers were just raw trying to get, because we got most oh. of it off by sanding. You can get a DA in most of it, yeah. but down the corners you couldn't. And so I took a Scotch Bright and um, I think it was lacquer thinner. I think it was lacquer thinner or reducer. One of the two. Oof. Yep. And we, we soak the Scotch Bright in that and then just rub it in the corners until it scratched it all out of there. Ooh. Got it all out of there. I'll tell you what. Your fingerprints had to be gone. I had 24 hours in them. Whoa. For the set of four? Mm -hmm. 24 <gasps> Eight hours. hours a wheel? How much? Or no, six hours a wheel. Yeah. Ooh. Six hours, yeah. 24 hours would be three grand a year. Yeah. Four grand. Well, obviously. How much do you think I charge? That early in 300. the game. 240. Ooh. I think I ordered them 200. $10 an hour. <laughs> Less materials. Less materials, which was, which was, I don't know. You ain't paying tax $100. Though, right? Follow oh, it as a loss. Was nothing. Call it a day. <laughs> <laughs> like, time to pack it up. I I'm not buying it for a living. Beautiful wheels. When I, had that one, I bet they look cherry. They were gorgeous. I bet they look cherry. I put a ton of time into them. And they, yeah, they, were, they were gorgeous when I got done. And that was only the face. I didn't do the, I didn't do the back. So. Control. This leads into something that I've been trying to get across to people for the longest time. And I'm going to put out a YouTube video on it shortly. Yeah, you should. Um, it's one of those things that it's on my list of things that I need to put out of my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. is As a young polisher, saying no. It's okay. Is okay. No, it's not. It is. <laughs> Listen to me. Stop fighting me on this one. Sometimes a hard no. Yeah. Is better than an easy yes. For sure. Because I've watched so many polishing companies over the years yep. die and kill their business by saying yes to stuff like that. Yeah. Where it was like, they didn't know how. Yep. And I'm not saying you shouldn't try things you don't know how. You think it was because burnout? They what? kept saying yes to things that didn't work and they burn out. Either they you get burnt out or you run yourself up. broke. Yeah. I, I watch it Which all is the one time. The same. I've, yeah. Same yeah. thing. I've watched easily. 200 polishers that I feel like could have, wow. maybe not all 200, but right. 200 I've watched fail. Yeah. I probably, I would say probably 50 of those I thought had a good shot at turning it into a really good business. Wow. Like they were really talented and just everybody thinks fuel tankers are so big and it's six grand. I'm going to make a killing. Uh, I'm going to do one and I'm going to make six grand. Yeah. And sure are. they're like, okay. And it takes them a week. And they're like, well, I just made six grand in a week. Nice. Well, no, you didn't. You yeah. didn't make six grand Less in a week. And everything else. Forty percent in the state of Wisconsin goes to taxes. Forty percent. Forty percent. Wow. Well, it's so if you're if you're an S corp, it's like twenty six percent. Right. But even then, like, who's you can, an S corp doing six thousand dollar tankers? Me. <laughs> <laughs> so. Are you doing tankers for six thousand? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, three to six, depending. Yeah. Um, sometimes more if they're rougher, but, but nonetheless, three to six. So yeah, there's a chunk of change right out of there. Right let me the just top. say Wisconsin is 26% of 40% if you're mm -hmm. an LLC or you're an LLC S corp. So 40% is taxed off of that tax. You can write off your materials and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But even then you're going to have two to $300 in materials. Yeah. You're going to have probably 60 hours in labor. Yeah. So at 60 hours, you're only it sounds like you're doing a hundred an hour, yeah. but it's not. By the time you take 40% right. out for your taxes, 40% mm -hmm. off is six grand is 3,800 left over. Yeah. So 3,800 divided by that 60 hours is 60 yeah. bucks an hour. Now minus your materials, mm -hmm. minus if you have employees or you have payroll or taxes and yep. unemployment, that kind of stuff. Oh, that stuff all wears off on it. It's like you made $20 an hour. Yeah. <sighs> 
I can go work in a factory for 20 bucks an hour. And, <laughs> and not have to like. And not feel like I'm 100 years old. Right. Yeah. So. There's so much that goes into that. I watch a lot see. of polishers get into big jobs like that mm -hmm. and run themselves ragged. And they did 60 hours and they feel tired. And now they can't work next week or they mm -hmm. can't work on Monday or Tuesday. And they got to reschedule and they got to cancel because they're just sore and in pain from doing a big job. Ugh. I watch them take on too many big jobs. And I watch a lot of guys get into pontoons and airstreams, and I have no disrespect for the guys that make it work. Mm -hmm. But I watch a lot of guys swallow themselves up and run, run themselves out of business. Right. It's not the competition running them out of business; they're running themselves out of business. Yeah. And that's one of the videos I need I'm to watch out there. Right now, to another polisher. That's yeah. for another time. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's 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 one of those things. Like, and that's one of the things I want to talk about on this podcast was like the business side of it. Is like. It's easy, you know, people ask all the time, how do I get into polishing? I'm like, whoa, uh, it's really easy to get in. A thousand dollars. Yeah. Can you start? Keenan and I have talked about this number time. What's the number, Keenan? Like 300 bucks. Really. Yeah. You had 300 dollars to get started. Uh, I mean, I started with probably like 1200 bucks. 1200 bucks to get a legit start. And mm -hmm. I started with a pretty good yeah. size inventory, really. Like, like yeah, 1200 bucks would buy a lot. People. Grinders in a decent amount of inventory. Yeah. Like, it, and with a 1200 dollar budget, you could buy a nice grinder. Yeah. Uh, two of them. You can buy a variable and a, and a. Uh, yep. I'll tell you, know. those red ones aren't that nice. It'll get the job done <laughs> for a little bit, long enough for you to make enough money to buy a nice green. Well, one. yeah, you're right. You're right. Already I gotta quit. One. I gotta quit talking hair. trash about them because they really aren't. <laughs> it will get you by. It will. It will get you in. If I'm you don't bougie. Know, yeah. Like, well, I've see. gotten spoiled with good yeah, daggers. See. Um, <laughs> I didn't write. Yeah. The. Uh, it's one of those things. Is like, it doesn't take anything to get into the business. Now, whether or not you're going to make it lucrative. Anybody you know, can polish it, to yeah. be sustainable and make it last. Yeah, you can't be like me. It's a different situation. <laughs> no, listen, you're sustaining. Yeah. And you're, you're right. growing. Yeah. So it's not like you're dying. Right. Burning out a little bit. You're going to burn out. That's yeah. the problem is yeah. because you're overachieving. Yes. Everything's a showpiece. Everything is a showpiece. And I'm not saying everybody doesn't deserve a showpiece. Right. Just not everybody wants to pay for a showpiece you're not getting paid for what you're doing. Right. Like yeah. you charge decent and you're making good yeah. money. You're not dying, but at the same time, you're not thriving either. Right. I'm not doing what we did in the shop today. No, no. And I mean, I'm one guy, but still one guy as fast as you guys are working. One guy could have done that in the whole day. 10 just hours for sure. If you started at eight o'clock this morning, you could have knocked those three trucks out by yourself. You'd oh, be, yeah. Worse for wear at the end You'd of the day. You'd be tired. Yeah. It'd yeah. Be a good day. You yeah. know? Yeah. For one guy, that'd be a good day. Could you imagine making that amount of money by yourself in one day? I mean. Done it. That's what I mean. Yeah. Is but it? yeah, and it's a good day. Yeah. So you get done, you're day. like, cool. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I don't care how tired you are. You Somebody hands you a fat check that's got more than three digits you on it. You wake up enough to get home. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're going home. Or clicking, if you're at home. You're going home clicking your heels. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm tired, but man, it was a good day. It like, I, good. I got yeah. the end of that. Yeah. And, yeah. and I got paid and I got the job done. So, you know. Like, and that's that's the allure is most of these kids and adults mm -hmm. that I see getting into polishing see that big bank check right. hit. And they're like, I just did a $6,000 tanker in one week. I made $6,000 this week. I can't make $6,000 at a job. Mm -hmm. But then they take two weeks off. Right. And they don't see that like that $6,000 at the end of yeah. the year, you need this for taxes. And some of these guys aren't paying taxes and whatever. That's their deal. Mm -hmm. But it's like you get into that $6,000 and you see that cash. And now right. that's not your money. Yeah. Like or you, get you to need that. to reinvest in materials. You need to reinvest in your grinders. You need to... There's so much reinvestment in this business. Like, yeah, it's not hardly anything to get in. Right. But to are you gonna sustain stay mobile, it. Are you going to stay mobile in, you know, your old pickup truck or whatever you got? You know, like. And everybody feels like they need to get in a shop. This yes. is my other biggest gripe is. I need a shop. I've been in every <laughs> polishing group I've ever seen. Everybody feels like they have to have a shop. I yes. just started a polishing business. I'm looking for a shop. Why? I was 15 years mobile before I got this That's shop. That's crazy. And this shop was a necessity because I was just swamped by two big contracts I had for concrete covered wheels. Yeah. And if it wasn't for those, I probably still would be mobile. Really? If it weren't for those two concrete companies that pushed me like... How many wheels were they dedicated to you? 
I had 300 wheels at my house, my old house. Oh my God. I had 300 wheels. 300 I had, wheels. I had wheels in my garage. I yeah. had wheels in my shed at my old house. And yeah. I had wheels at my um, my wife's aunt and uncle's house, the house we live in oh now, in his shed. I had wheels in his oh shed. My God. And I didn't have enough they insurance. They shipped all those to you? What's that? They shipped all those to you? I had truckloads of wheels coming. And my, wow. my cousin and I would go and pick up truckloads of wheels. We'd go and pick them up. That's wild. Between them delivering them and us picking wheels. up, we had 300 wheels. We did like three loads of wheels that week, and it was 370 wheels or something like that. It was creeping Good up on 400 grief. wheels that week. We got wow. them done in, I think, 10 days. 10 days? 10 days. 300 and some wheels in 10 days. And you're using an old, uh, the old Titan machine? Yeah. Again? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Three. Uh, I was hand sanding with the sand shapers. Wow. And my cousin was running them. So you're using the old jig that you and your dad mm -hmm. built? Wow. Yeah, that old, that old jig that looked like an engine stand. Is this still in the... It's still no, in the, actually, oh. I paid it forward to oh. a local polisher. Oh, nice. That um, he, he hasn't been hating on me. He's been one of the nice guys in the industry. And um, he hit me up. He's like, hey, I really need a jig. Is there any way I can buy that one that you have out back that's just sitting there? I said, I'll tell you what. I'll sell it to you for the cost of the materials. And you can have it. Wow. And he's like, dude, I'll come pick it up today. Is that all right? I'm like, dude, I'll meet you there. Like, I was itching to get it out of here because yeah. it was just sitting back here. Right. Not getting used. Yep. Right. Yep. So that's I paid wild. it forward a little bit. Uh, that's one of those. Um, yeah. I don't know. I don't remember that. Got lost in that one. Yeah. <laughs> but that's the one Has thing it been that, a like. Long day? <laughs> <laughs> but that's the one thing, like, a lot of, like I said, a lot of this. Yeah. Stuff, these small new polishers, yeah. I see a lot of guys get swallowed up by that too. That just blows my mind that you guys went through almost 400 wheels in 10 days. Like, you can look at that number, you get to the end of that, and you look at what you just, somebody wrote you a check for, and you're like, yeah, we need to not be in the garage. I did 85 wheels in one day. In the garage? I was literally putting hash marks on the wall oh, as really? I was doing them. Oh, man. Because I wanted to count the Because I, <laughs> I wanted to count them all at the end of the day. Yeah. And like the first few that I did, like the dust was way thicker on those, so it was yeah. harder to count. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we did. You think it was 85, it was actually 105. That may have been, <laughs> may have been, but 85 was the number I could count. So yeah, it was- Like counting rings on a tree. It sucked. That was brutal. Like we were just, we prepped them all in like three days. And then I just sat and I ran wheels in the afternoon. He ran wheels in the morning. So like he, I think he came in from six until two and I went from two until three in the morning. It was like 13 hours or 14 hours and I ran mm -hmm. 85 wheels. Wow. That's crazy. But yeah, I, I wouldn't have gotten into a shop had it not been for those two big accounts. So right. I see a lot of polishers. We know some of the big guys too that were up and coming that got into a shop and killed themselves with a the shop debt. Really? Yeah. Like, you don't realize like twelve hundred dollars doesn't sound like a lot for yeah, rent sure. in a shop, mm -hmm. but at the end of the month, like some of these people are only Three turning times. a couple thousand dollars in profit. Yeah. Like after you take out all your hard costs and your expenses, well, mm -hmm. you throw twelve hundred dollars in Pay that yourself. mix, plus water, plus electricity, plus heat, mm -hmm. plus everything else. Like, can you really afford an extra two or three grand a month? Yeah. And still pay taxes? Mm -hmm. Not really. It's, that'd be tough. And mobile, mobile's nice. You don't have to pay any shop rent. You don't have to pay electric. Mobile's nice, except for the days it rains and I'm somewhere that doesn't have a shop. That's the... That that's was the, the other kick. kicker for me. Yep. Was Rain we get a lot of snow in the winter. Mm -hmm. And my shop at home was in my garage. Yeah. And we ran a torpedo heater. No, oh my goodness. Did you know aluminum dust is explosive yeah. when it's really thick? <laughs> we never found out, but there was a few times I thought I had carbon monoxide poisoning when I walked out. Yep. And I, I may have. When I when I set up uh, originally in my shop in the garage, I had a little propane torpedo in there, little yep. 40,000 VTU. Yep. And uh, I had a carbon monoxide detector in there. And one day after about five hours, that thing running. It, it went, went off. off. Yeah. I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> Is that why I feel like that? All right. Yeah. Yeah. So I, uh, I, went I didn't sleep great that night. I opened the door. Yeah. When I opened the door. I was like, all right, we'll just blow this thing I'll out. Then. It up. Uh -huh. But yeah. it's one of those things. It's like, yeah, doing it 
having a shop would be nice for me because I have so many customers that don't have a shop. And then also, like, I have customers that have shops that are not, like, adequate. Sure. You show up and like, yeah, I got a shop. And you show up and it's, the truck doesn't fit. Dirt. In or. Dirt or rock floor. There's no light. Oh. That's, that's my favorite. Bad. You get there and no light. All the breakers are 10 amp breakers. You're oh like, yeah. <laughs> that's the first thing I say to any new customer. I'm like, all right, show me to your strongest outlet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that one there should be good. I'm like, we're going to find out. We're going to find out real yeah, quick. I, if even, it's not, we're going to be this whole truck with a variable. <laughs> even Saturday when we, when we went working on Saturday, I, I asked the guy, I'm like, do you have two separate breakers? Cause we always run two cutters. Yeah. So I'm like, do you have two separate breakers? He's like, um, I think that one and that one. I'm like, if it isn't, we'll find out in a minute. Yeah. Like, it doesn't take five minutes to blow a breaker when you got two high speeds on oh, there. Oh, yeah. So. So the high speed, the grinder is a 15 amp grinder. A 15 amp breaker is only good for you, 80%. When they get hot and you tug on them. Yeah. They go over 20 pretty quick. Do they? Yeah. yeah. They'll hit. I think we tested them one time and they were like 22 amp they were pulling when they got hot and yeah, putting and a pressure breaker, on them. And a breaker is only rated at 80%. Yeah. So that's a 20 amp breaker. Oh, Kick God. Heart, heartbeat. And then that also, has been our biggest waste of time ever because. What's that? Going upstairs and popping breakers all the time. Uh, here? Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. Wow. We've had extra outlets put in and we still pop breakers. Really? Mm -hmm. It's wow. miserable. That's our biggest time in. waster. I put a, uh, when I had. The, biggest lost revenue. When I set the garage up for the jig. I put a four gang box down there yep. right next to the jig and it's a, it's on a 30 amp breaker. I've never kicked that breaker. Oh yeah, 30 amp, you'll never blow that. No, one guy. We got a 30 amp all back and we got two 30s in the shop now. Yeah. And honestly, I was tugging on that 30 today with the 22 fives we were working on on yeah. the dump trucks. We haven't popped them since we put the 30s yeah. in. It's so and much nicer. Hold strong. Oh yes, I've never kicked that breaker. I'll kick the 15s in the garage or the 20s, the dual 20s in the it garage. It don't take much. We'll knock those out with whatever else mm -hmm. in the garage running, but uh the 50, the 30s is, is nice having that set up is so nice like when somebody drops a truck off at the house yeah i take my 100 foot extension cord and stick it in there like I'm, we run, i know i'm worried about it our 100 foot extension cords we run all 10 gauge yeah like that's they're, what mine is. they're huge because i don't want the i don't want the drop between there yeah. and my well because i'm running i run a 100 foot and then i'm running a 50 on top of that oh really yeah i'm running my 50 my 50 foot three-way uh 14 mm. three and then run Speaking the, of Keenan, you need to get me that unlocking three-way links. I need to get them ordered for the shop because I, mm -hmm. I definitely want to make that happen. Yeah, nice. Um, and for the road, for what it's worth, um, that they do they do really help. Mm -hmm. But what's the one really good piece of advice you could give new polishers, like somebody else getting in the game right now? Something that you've seen in your five to six years you've been doing this. Something that you think would help somebody listening to this hmm probably my biggest thing and nobody wants to follow these rules is ppe hmm. get a respirator get hearing protection yeah like unless you like listening to your ears ring at night and like you know like <laughs> oh i That's see terrible. you over there that was terrible <laughs> the lights are so strong over here i can't i can't <laughs> see what you're doing over there man. King, King is over here <laughs> This is like, it's that, that's number one is like, get a, get a respirator and yeah. get, cause like, it's just, it's a tool that you should have. Like, I agree. You your eyeballs you're... and your lungs are two things that I know are some, not easily replaceable. Yeah. I know some people throw on a pair of sunglasses and a t-shirt around their face. I personally can't <laughs> do it. I get like the fuzzies on my eyelashes. I'm out. Yeah. Like I don't I play it. anymore. I hate it too. Yep. I do not miss the days of guy liner. Yeah, I do not. And then, like at back in the uh, back when I first started, not wearing any hearing protection and running that grinder for just a couple hours every night, and then I go to go to bed and I just be like, ee, laying in bed, just listening to him ring. I'm like, oh, that can't be good. So uh, that's my first thing. The next thing is, if you're trying to grow your polishing business, the number one thing you can do, if you don't do anything else, is take care of your customers. Like the end, take care of your customers. Do go above and beyond in terms of like, when you show up to a shop and you polish in their shop, clean it. Like uh, sweep up, yes. sweep up when you get done. Like it, make it, make them think you weren't there. They come back out to a shiny truck and a clean floor and they're like, cool. 
I don't have to sweep up. I even feel bad like when I offer to my customers, I'm like, hey, where's your brooms? Yeah. And they're like, no, 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 no I'll no. clean it up. Mm -hmm. I still feel bad. Like, I feel like. Right. I should be cleaning this up. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like Saturday, we were out at a job site. and I asked the guy, I'm like, do you got any brooms? He's like, no, nah, don't worry about it. I'll clean it up before I leave. I'm like, yeah, I know you can. I don't That's want you to have to. Right. Like, yep. I try I'd rather to take up, care of it. I try to clean up anywhere I can. Uh, obviously, some shops with, like, really rough concrete <laughs> makes it a lot harder. It's tough. To try to get clean back up. Uh, you see that I have in my van now. I've got I see you two brooms in there. Yep. yep. Because I got tired of showing up to somebody's shop and they have this stiff bristled broom that's made out of steel. <laughs> or something. I don't know what it is, but it's it doesn't matter. It's a wire brush. <laughs> it's great if you're trying to push like dirt like clods across the floor. But if you're trying to sweep up fine cotton dust, it's worthless. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm just gonna buy my own brooms. So it's literally just spreading it out. Yeah. <laughs> you're just you're just you're you're evenly grading it across the floor. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I bought my own brooms, my own nice brooms. So I don't have to worry about that. And then like, there's a couple of customers of mine that I offer to clean up. And they're like, no, no, we'll just power wash the floor when you're done. I'm like, yeah, that's fine. Like, yeah, that's what you want to do. Not a problem. That's what the guy said Saturday. I think he said yep. he was going to pressure wash, wash the floor. Yep. Wash and I have floor. a Zamboni here in my shop. Yeah. And we Zamboni every day. So really? I do not want to. If you've ever been to some of these other Paul shops, like it is terrible. Mm -hmm. like, I mean, I'm not just trashing on people or ragging on people, but like you can tell what size shoe that operator has because it's like six inches around his shoe size. <laughs> like you can tell. Really where it, he stands? Yeah, right where he, he stands. He stands in a divot? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's it's wild. Like, I, we had a Paul shop right here in town that the guy invited me over one time because he did a lot of NASA parts and mm. he wanted to know if it was something I could help him with. Right. And I'm like, no, like I don't do stand up lathe stuff. Like I just don't, that's not my yeah. expertise. Like production stuff isn't my thing. But I, I still stopped in and literally his toilet had this much on it. Wow. It was disgusting. How? I was like, I don't know how you live like this. Like, how do you not clean up? Like, it's not that I'm a neat freak, but still. But at the same time, like, it just. Yeah. Just that, like, that much buildup. Like, you didn't, like. Yeah. Do you shower at night? We we scrape the floors <laughs> too. I mean, oh yeah. We scrape Here. the floors. We zamboni. Yep. Like we do a lot to keep our floors looking decent, and we seal them. We try to seal them every winter. Yeah. Uh, or every other winter if it stays decent, but to keep the concrete from getting too dry from the chemicals that we use to clean it. Right. Um, wow. It just kind of is what it is. Right. It's one of those things. It's. But yeah, that's what I would say. Of like you know, take care of your customers and, um, you know, invest in tooling. Try to learn the business side of it a little bit, so at least you know what you're getting into. That's yeah. that has got to be the hardest part of figuring this out. Anybody can polish. Anybody can polish. To Try make it a polishing out. business. Yeah, it's a whole other ball game. Whole different game. You're not wrong about that. What's the time on that one, Keenan? All the times. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. What's it shut off at? Uh, Thirty. Oh. 30. Right. So we should probably reset it before the final section here. I think. I'll give you floor. You have. <laughs> there you go. And we're back. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So this is the one of my favorite parts. It's we called being it. professional. It's accurate. Yeah, fact. Yeah. So we yeah we got we have a TikTok is live right now. Yeah. So not a lot of people watching, but still live. It was still one of those things that like we're here. Might as well. Yeah, it'd be fun. Something fun. It's to a do. little extra for your viewers. Right. Um, since you've gotten big on TikTok, may as well incorporate TikTok into your podcast. Perfect. My podcast that you're a part of. Either way, it's my podcast. Semantics. <laughs> Potato. Never mind. Twenty three is mine. Go away. <laughs> Twenty three is yours. Where are you going with that potato thing? <laughs> uh, 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 I can't because they won't let me play it on YouTube if I go that route. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but the last part is one of my favorite parts. And it's been interesting. Um, it's gotten a little interesting. Is probably the best way to put it. Yeah, I was supposed to come up with. Like, I know where we're going with this. Yes. And I was supposed to like. I was gonna think of something to ask you. I pick your brain a lot weekly. <laughs> like, and I'm okay with that. Yeah, and like that's like my favorite thing to do. Yeah, is call you up, catch you on a day when you literally have nothing going on. And you, like and you answer the phone, you're like, goose. I'm like, oh, oh it's going to be a good one. This is going to be a good one. <laughs> Means Whatever I'm, I'm doing, put it down. I got a 30-minute window here. I can pick his brain because he's in yep, a good mood. He's in a good mood, and he answers the phone, and he's ready to talk. Yep. I'm like, all right, quick, start so, thinking about things to pick his brain about. This last 
this last section is always the favorite for me because I get to hear something that you want to know. So I will open this last section up for you for, to ask me anything you want to ask. Yeah. Only thing I ask is don't make it. It won't be. Yeah. I, I don't even need to ask you. You've listened to some of my other podcasts. You know what the rules are. It won't be political. It likely will not be about religion. It will be polishing related. Um, as long as it's not like old product related either. Like no, I try not, it to, won't I try not to go back to Although I would love either. like. Of course, I'd love like pick your brain like outside of your product. What's your favorite product? <laughs> well, like I don't know. Like we said earlier, like for what it's worth, polish. I could answer that question very simply. Can you? Yeah. Lumi and Jess Car. <laughs> <laughs> that was Both literally products he sells a, a cop website. out. But at the same time, they're two well. great products that I found no point in developing. Yeah. Because they work so well. Yeah. That was your yeah. Well. Nothing like that. You know, like if you can find it, why why re why reinvent the wheel? Exactly. Um God, I have no idea what I was what to ask you. I asked so many questions today. Like so many questions. We talked about how many revelations. It was nice shooting the, it was nice shooting the breeze in the shop. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was nice that the that it wasn't a, like a stupid busy day. Yeah. It was exactly what we needed. Like I had a couple of work trucks come through yeah. that I could, you know, look at and try and dull you down a little bit. I was able to watch like was what had just enough going on that I was able to actually watch you two polish. Yeah. Um, both you and Keenan. And so that was cool to watch how each of you do a little bit different. I can't wait to see you <clears throat> see us tomorrow as well. Because yeah. Because tomorrow's going to be one of those, like, we're hustling so that I can get out of here and get mm -hmm. headed to Nebraska. Yeah. But at the same time, it's a little bit nicer truck, so we got to put right. in a little more oh, yeah. tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But still stay at that fast pace and... And get it done. Get it yeah. done. Um... I'm trying to think of like business, like a like the business side of it, like a question I have for you in terms of that. Um, I have no idea. I've always pushed you yeah, to sell, well, not sell, but purchase better equipment. Yeah. Like that's one of the big ones. I know you asked me that today. Like a wheel machine? <laughs> <laughs> I did try to get my shameless plug on the yeah. wheel machine when you... When you come out of the room and I'm like, your back didn't hurt, did it? Yeah. And you were like, you ready no, for one? It actually didn't. I'm like, uh, <laughs> you got your paperwork here. <laughs> <laughs> but the whole still has that new machine smell. The whole grinder thing, like, I I know I pick on you for the Bauer, and for what it's yeah. worth, the Bauer is a great machine. If you have to choose a low dollar sub one hundred dollar polisher, yeah, I'm not sure you could beat it. I'm not sure you could either. Yeah. I feel like. For the value. It'd be hard pressed to find another buffer in the market that does what it does. Yeah. But at the same time, call me bougie, whatever you want to call it. There's certain amenities. And like today we were talking about, the Bauer is a mere copy of, of the, the DeWalt. DeWalt. Yeah. It is. It is. It's just a red housing. I think, I think <laughs> if you handed somebody. I don't like the DeWalt either. Well, yes. Yeah, so, see, that's the thing, right? And he does. <laughs> Keith is just I think if you handed somebody the to the DeWalt. Either. If you handed somebody the DeWalt and then you handed them the Bauer, I think it would be a little... You can tell the difference if you yeah. know what you're looking for, I but I don't know that you would know it immediately. If I... You know, I've joked around about doing this a number of times, and Keenan, I really think you and I should do it someday when we're just messing around. We need to take one of our old respirators that's just scratched beyond repair, that's just trash, spray paint the inside of it <laughs> black, <laughs> and just prove that we can polish with our eyes closed. The yeah. whole truck? I don't know about a whole truck, but yeah. I could definitely do a wheel. You got, you got some flack for that when you did the one where you were literally looking the at the tank camera. and I was looking yeah. away. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah, got some flack for that. Someone was like all upset because you were showing off. Uh, you know, and for what it's worth, I just wanted to prove. Every polisher can do it. Every polisher can do it. I just wanted to prove product. that, like, once you get to a certain point in your career, yeah. you go off a of touch and feel more and than you do what so you're so. actually physically seeing. Yeah. Like, I decide whether I'm going to move faster or slower mm -hmm. based on how the buffer feels like sliding across the metal. Mm -hmm. So like, I don't need to look at it. Right. I could close my eyes and just run mm -hmm. across yeah, it. Right. And I really think one day we should just because <laughs> the video did catch some flack, but at the okay. end of the day, like, you know me, I, for the most part, I don't care. You right. Know me. So it's like, you know me. <laughs> <laughs> and I know you're always down for a good challenge. I do that every day. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. 
The so, day customer lost his mind because I was itching my head while I was polishing wheels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've run these one handed all day. <laughs> oh my god, watching him rouge up today, like he's wild. Trigger lock and just never lets off. He trigger locks all, like, all day. Oh my god. To the podcast, like I don't unlock it. Yeah, the... he's oh, western. Uh, western. He's western to say yeah, the least. Nebraska western. Oh god, <laughs> god. I know, but it makes my brain <laughs> hurt. <laughs> My I'm like, muscle won't go out on me. Yeah. I don't know if we talked about it in Keenan's podcast, but there yeah. was one day where I was on one side of the truck, he was on the other, and his trigger lock got the best of him. <laughs> it kicked back. That was when he was in between the tank, right? No, that's not for my arm. Oh. And all I heard was whack. That wasn't the trigger lock. I caught an ass, but it was trigger lock. So. It was locked, yeah. <laughs> it kicked back. It ripped his respirator it clear kicked. off his face. I thought. I thought you guys. I thought you said that was. About it. I thought that was when you said you were like, you were doing a tank and you got too close to it, and like. I don't know if I buffed my face that time. I'm yeah. Sure, yeah. Did, did no, he I catch your beard? It. I didn't help. No. Yeah. Another time I caught it, yanked it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. Trigger lock. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just take the thing off if it was me. Like. We have one grinder like that, and I change the handle out. <laughs> I, I busted one. the wrong. No. I busted the wrong piece out the uh-huh. safety the safety tab. Yeah, and then the lock tab broke with it when I took it out. Uh-huh. So, <laughs> for first week here, Keenan's like that buffer don't lock. I'm like, yeah, I accidentally busted the wrong tab out. He's like, why don't you switch out the the trigger? Yeah, like yeah. you got a hundred triggers up there. No, no. I'm like, why don't you change the trigger out? Because like I don't trigger lock it, so it doesn't bother As me one bit. Seen toting across the shop with a screwdriver. <laughs> he literally did. He took it the second I told him. Why okay. don't you do it? He took it to the workbench, ripped it apart, <laughs> put a, the trigger lock one from upstairs in it. Like, he wasn't putting up with it. Oh, man. I kept drawing that one. I said, no more. He <laughs> just oh, kept grabbing man. the wrong one. Nope. Not mine. But uh, at the same time, yeah. like, I've, I've gotten to the point in my career, 21 years in, where I see the value in not just the dollar amount spent on the grinder, mm-hmm. but the what value in what that grinder achieves me versus not having to run to the store to replace it yep. or not having the torque I want in a certain situation. Like mm-hmm. I've been in enough situations where I know what a cheap grinder is and isn't going to handle. Right. And I know what I need to handle to achieve what we're putting out. Mm-hmm. So like when we're putting out our show truck stuff, if you, I know that's why Keenan likes the DeWalt, he likes to feather the trigger yeah. a little more on the edges. For me, I like to let the soft start on the Makita slow myself down. That's why I bought him the DeWalt's because I know that's what he likes. Mm-hmm. And I bought myself the Makita's because I know that's what I like for my own my own taste. Right. And if the Bowers work great for you and it's yeah. getting you the results you want, it's getting your that's customers right. the results that they expect out of you, mm-hmm. perfect, perfectly fine. Right. I see no issues in that. But at the same time, my high speeds, I watch people buy Bosch's. I watch people buy um, the Harbor Freight. The Hitachis, the Hitachis mm-hmm. none of those have the torque of the Makita. Yeah. Like even the, even the Milwaukee's, they just don't have the torque. Yeah. Like you reef on them, you start losing RPMs. And as soon as you start losing those RPMs, your shine completely changes. Your heat changes. Everything just completely changes. Right. And for me, I like consistent results day in and day out. For me, the DeWalt high speed also works to achieve that. It spins a little faster than I like. Oh, really? And it's a lot heavier. They spin mm-hmm. 8,500. Oh, man. When you put them under load, they're 6,000. Right. But True 6,000, then. Well, with right. a grinding disc, they're 8,500. But with right. a buffing pad on them, buffing pads have a ton of... Mm-hmm. The fabric creates more torque pressure than a grinding disc does. Yeah. So it brings it down to about 6,000. We actually torque tested them one time. Um my metallurgist friend that I talk to on a regular basis, um, he has a tool that you can um, set a buffer on and it'll measure the RPMs. Yeah. So, like, we'd put it on there. You put it on a dyno? We'd put it under, it was like a dyno. <laughs> we'd put it on there, put it under load, he'd measure the RPMs, and then right. the DeWalt was at about 6,000. I used to have two of them, two of the big DeWalts, the mm-hmm. 8500s. Um, I ended up selling them to a polisher. <laughs> 12 years ago 13 Jeez. years ago maybe wow um because the makitas got real light they went to the um 
9067Ls was the model. Mm -hmm. And those 9067Ls were like non-ergonomic. They were super tiny. The head was really compact. Dude, those were the best the grinders. Gear? If I could find a pallet of 9067Ls laying somewhere, I would buy a pallet of 9067Ls because they were killer grinders. Super compact. I'll I'll dig one out. I oh, have a bunch them? of them upstairs. Mm. I'll dig one out and I'll sh I'll send you a picture this of it. This is a high speed. The 6,000 RPM, the head was super small. It yeah. never got hot. When it did get hot, it was actually just filthy. Yeah. The body itself was super compact. It looked like um, um, the Makita 3500. It had like yeah. that same body, super small, super compact, but spun 6,000 RPM. Wild. And it, well, I shouldn't say that. I think it was 5,500 they were rated at. Mm -hmm. So it was close to that 5,000 that, you know, I like to be at. Yeah. Um, and you and I have talked about that, the tooling to get it down to 5,000 oh, yeah. is ridiculous. We, like I actually looked into it. We into a conversation for that for a while. Oh, I wish miserable. I could, I wish I could think of a, a good question to ask you. Not even for myself. Like I said, I pick your brain all the time. I wish, I wish I could think of like a nugget that you've given me that would be really beneficial to someone else. Um, outside of maybe the, the whole like let it go. Like that's a, that's a pretty good nugget um i just wish that i wish there was something i could think of did not do my job of i feel like it's getting ready for the podcast the neat side for me is like i feel like every polisher i've talked to has gotten some kind of nugget from me at some mm -hmm. point in time like casey it was him keeping his chin up that changed everything for him yeah that's like he was always looking down and looking up through his eyes to see where he was going uh -huh. by picking his chin up and watching below instead of watching at it uh -huh. changed the game for him. Isn't that wild? And for you, hopefully yeah, today and right. hopefully tomorrow, um, seeing work truck put out, mm -hmm. hopefully that helps and yeah. helps change the game for you a little <sighs> bit. It's going to be so hard. It is hard. It's hard I'm to a, make that adjustment. I'm a perfectionist at heart too. Yeah. So like I want to put out two hundred percent every day all day, but you just can't. You want every you can't show wheel. You can't and be sustainable. Right. You saw what that last wheel I did on the wheel machine looked like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was nice. You, are you trying to turn it down? Yes, it's not working. <laughs> <laughs> your, your perfectionism is showing through. It's a work truck. Stop that. I was I was uh, actually telling Steve when we were driving to the house that my my favorite days are like when Huttenstein or somebody stops by and like we can unleash our inner children and just go crazy. But at the same time, it's even better when we have a work truck in first thing in the morning mm -hmm. and then have them in right after. And they're like, Whoa, my truck's going to look better than that. Right? <laughs> like, <laughs> well, yes, you're going to spend three times as much money as he did too. He wasn't looking for yeah. sitting on front row at Louisville. He was looking for sitting in front row at the local field. You being able to turn that on and shut that off. In the same day. It just blows my mind. How do you go from one truck that gets just a, I mean, I don't want to call it a cut and rub because it's not you color it, but I mean, essentially, it is a quick cut. Like, it blew my mind today that you guys could run through that truck that fast. And of course, you want to step up on the truck and get your face right down in it. And you can see whatever, like, imperfections there were sure. or whatever this, that, and the other might, there might be. Yeah. To step back, watch it leave down the road, and it looks like it has a brand new set of wheels on it. Looks killer. It looks like the tanks have great clarity. Like Customers sent uh, me a message while we were sitting here shooting this podcast. Yeah. Thank you for getting three in today instead of two. All of them look amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you can't see the podcast. That is my brain melting. Um, he's ecstatic. Uh, yeah, he's ecstatic. Yeah. And like, and his trucks all got dirty before they got home because yep. they all went right back out to the field. But they to still go looked better than they did when they left. Yep. By a long shot. Yep. And now they're ready for another year. Yep. And you get paid good money. Like you got paid enough money to keep the lights on and keep the shop going. Yeah, we did. It well was today. a good day for a cancellation. Like you had a cancellation. Yeah. Early and like. Actually, like, today was a full day of cancellations. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. You like, had something else lined up. We had nothing lined up as of like last week. Oh, really? We had a guy call and cancel for the afternoon. And then I had, this is me in the shop. Guy message, called me and was like, hey, I got to go in for mm -hmm. eyeball surgery. It's going to be one of those emergency deals. I can't make my appointment. Mm -hmm. 
and I was in the shop and I'm like, hey, yeah, I'll, I'll take care of it when I get in the office. <laughs> By the time I get to the office, I forget everything yeah. I talked about to anybody. So I try not to talk to people while I'm in the shop because it screws right. up my schedule a lot. Right. So like I didn't have anything on the schedule for today. And I messaged him um, yesterday and was like, um, you still coming tomorrow? And he called me right away and he's like, uh, do you not remember I canceled my appointment? I'm like, oh my God. So I have a list. I go through. I have a bunch of really good customers that mm -hmm. usually have stuff laying around. Yep. And I call them and I'm like, hey, I got an opening tomorrow. If you can send some over, I'll get you done. If you can't, no big deal. Yeah. And one of my really good dump truck companies, he always has something laying around. If not, like today he pulled three trucks off the road. Like he literally, oh, yeah. every one of them came in warm. Because yes. they were hauling. The first one wasn't too bad in the morning. That second yeah. one was cooking. And that third one, we were breaking the it tires down. It was hot. Yeah, like we were breaking the tires down and you couldn't get like you sprayed silicone on the tires to help break them down. And like it was just gone. Steam. Like, oh, OK, well, <laughs> a lot of good that did. Yeah, it was uh, it was so when I was uh, wiping the wheels down with uh, glass cleaner. Yep. Like if I sprayed them all with glass cleaner, I'm like, oh, I'll let that soak into that dirt. And I come back and it's all dry. I'm like, what happened? <laughs> the, it dirt, be, the dirt's re dry. It that? should be mud, but yeah. it isn't. <laughs> it's dry. It's dry. Like they were good. They were toasty. They were. But yeah, you know. he, we had planned on doing two. Yep. And when we got done with the second one, you're like, let's do one more. I'm like, all right. So I messaged him. That I'm like, Keen. hey, can Keen, you? Keen was like, I'm fired up. Let's go. I'm like, can you send yeah. me one more? And uh, he's like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Be there in like 30, 45 minutes. I'm like, all right, we'll go take a long lunch. Yeah. And when he gets here, we'll get banging on it. So we did. Yep. It worked out. Took it lunch. Is. It all ended up working out. Yep. And uh, it was a, yeah, it was a good day, I thought. Trying to think of like a, um, just a good nugget to, to throw around. I just don't know what it would be. We do talk about a lot of stuff. I know. I, that's the thing. I pick your brain so much. I'm like, oh, what would be a good like? What have I learned? Like, well, everything. So like I said, there's so much good stuff that I'm. When I finally do get to sit down and have a podcast with Here's Joe, Joe Clemente from Wheelie Polish, uh -huh. I'm really looking forward to that one because I, him and I don't talk a lot of polishing because he doesn't like polishing uh -huh. but he's very good business savvy yeah so like he doesn't like polishing but he likes business so like him and i talk a lot of business mm -hmm. i'm really looking that'd, forward that'd to that be podcast good. because it's gonna be next? it's gonna be just business i need to fly out there that's <laughs> oh, the yeah. problem so yeah. as soon as the shop can sustain oh, and handle me being gone for two days i'm just gonna go we need you to take care of that Six. Yeah. I'll make it a short trip. Well, I'll see ya. Two days sounds pretty easy. <laughs> chop, chop. Uh, how about this? Here's a little thing that learned over watching polishing, stuff like that. I've seen guys take and throw hand polish onto a part, whether it be a grill or maybe a tank or whatever, and then buff it back off with a flannel. Um, what is your thought on that? And what um, we do it every day is that finish good? Like, how? What's the best way to make that finish good? What are PM sherry running? How much rouge sherry put on that flannel along with what's already on there as far as the liquid polish? So this do goes, I need to let it dry? Do I need to uh, haze over? This goes back to our conversation we had earlier today in the shop. Yeah, um, that's a super loaded question. Like okay. there's no really good answer mm -hmm. for that um, to each their own. Yeah. I prefer to use our hand polish. Yeah. So for us, once it's dry, it buffs off super easy. Yeah. So I like to put our, our hand polish on. And if you put it on a little too thick, you can wipe it with a cotton terry cloth real quick. Right. And thin it out flash. a little bit and then buff over it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I see no, nothing wrong with that. I do know a lot of polishers that do that to hide stuff. Yeah. If you're doing it to just hide stuff, you're already behind the eight ball and it's going to take you forever to catch back up anyways. Mm -hmm. But if you're doing it because it's helping elevate your process, that's a different story. Mm -hmm. Now, not all hand polishes will work. Yeah. Some of them I shouldn't say that work. all hand polishes will work. Okay. Some of them will not work very well if you don't wipe most of it off right. before you buff because they're too greasy or too oily mm -hmm. or whatever the situation is. It's just going to clog up your pad and clog up your buff. 
us in the shop, if we're hand mm. polishing, we're trying to get off excess wax before we do our final color or our show pass. Right. So we're going to use our flannel. We're going to use it at like 14 to 1800 RPM. We're going to use green compound on that pad to take off the hand polish. Now, if you're just putting hand polish on and dry buffing, a lot of guys in the West Coast do it that way. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. I find that the, like I said in a number of times, the active ingredient in most hand polish is crushed glass. Mm -hmm. In most cases, that crushed glass gets jammed up in the pores of the um, flannel, the flannel mm -hmm. and it leaves excess scratches. So you need to double down. If, if you were trying to dry buff, you would have to double down on your raking. Even then. Yeah. I don't feel like you'd get around that. So by putting the green compound on there, you allow the green compound to what get caught in there. It gives a lubricant. Oh, okay. So the compound acts as a lubricant. The wax in there um, helps skate over the top, helps kick off a lot of the excess. Mm -hmm. So compound works both ways. It helps keep the pad wet, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it takes off excess as well. Especially so color. Color is a like turning on the lights in a room. Right. You guys, uh, you say to use that daily, that mm -hmm. process, depending on, on what you're doing. On almost all grills. Yeah. So what is the benefit for you guys? How does that improve your process to, uh, like, why do you implement that? Um, what does it do for you that just doing a brown and then chasing it with a green and a flannel doesn't do? It helps soften the hash. Okay. So by removing the extra waxes. Yes. Um, I feel like it helped soften the hash. Is probably the best way to put yeah, it. Yeah. Right. Like, and it gave us a a way to check our work before we got to our color. Like, as soon as you put hand polish over it, you, you see can it. see through the hand polish. Uh -huh. Like, if your overlap oh. wasn't right, right, you're gonna see it. Yep. If your pressure wasn't right, hand you're going to see it. It does. Yeah. And ours especially because it has a lot of solvent in it. Mm -hmm. That solvent will show you literally everything. everything. You're like, oh, I didn't see that DA. Yeah. You're like, yeah. And I've had a few people now tell me that they're like, oh, you got diesel in your polish. It's not going to work all like that. I'm like, there is no diesel in there at all. It's a high-end solvent. Is that K1? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there is no it solvent. It doesn't look diesel to me. There is no diesel in there yeah. at all. Yeah. So... Diesel would just hide everything. You should just tell it's jet fuel. It's just jet fuel, yeah. <laughs> That's That's just, price nice. Our price would have to be $40 a bottle. <laughs> it's too funny. Uh, but, yeah, no. It helps soften the hash. Makes life just a little bit easier. Yeah. Okay. But don't, you don't recommend doing it dry. Use a little bit of green compound on your flannel. I like to let the polish dry, yeah. Yeah, but don't, do, don't dry buff it. Don't run a oh, dry no. flannel back over it. No, I do know a lot of people that do that. I don't yeah. like it. I, I would put some green compound or purple compound, whatever your favorite final color compound is. stop that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I literally, we have very limited inventory in the shop. Yeah. It's brown compound, green compound, black compound, yellow compound. That's it. Yeah. One no blue, white. no purple. It's a lost case. It, it's <laughs> such a waste for me. Like, yeah. we sell it because people buy it. And people right. feel like they have to have it. And and they I mean, they and don't like the color for, green, and I'm okay with that. For what it's worth, I mean, it does do a job. Mm -hmm. Like, when it came out, like, when the purple bar came out, like, it was, you said it to me, I was like, bro. Yeah. Like, I, I did on a, um, I did it on a swing arm for a Honda yeah, I remember 600. That. Yeah. And I did that, and I took, I took a piece of chrome, a chrome-plated uh, lid, and I put that lid right up against that thing I was like you you can't tell the difference there's there's no difference from the aluminum to the chrome and uh it was one of those things like it's gorgeous yeah you know but we did find out on some other things that in certain conditions on certain metals that is not the case yeah purple can be your best friend or your worst enemy oh yeah uh-huh yeah like why does this not look right well because you used the wrong compound <laughs> <laughs> And even then, you, you like, doubled down on purple. You should not have done that. If you elevate your buff and your pressure and your comp and your your overlap and mm -hmm. your technique, like I feel like I can still get better results with a yellow and a green than most people can with a white and a purple or a white and a blue. You know, and I haven't. It's been a long time. When when I started polishing, the process back then was orange and brown high speed, yellow and green high speed. Yep. Like I still do that. The end. 
Keenan does it almost every day. Yeah, really? Uh-huh. You still do it. Yep. I know I saw you guys today using the flannels, but we already know, like, on our, that, on our work truck stuff. That the, flannel in the new green, that will, like... It'll you, clean up stuff that you couldn't do with yellow you, and green. Your pattern would have to be so much tighter with yellow and green to make that look right. I'll be dead honest with you. Yeah. Even before we switched products. <laughs> yeah. We, uh... On stuff that was rough like it was today, yeah. we would do orange or brown and just hand polish it. Yeah. Yep. Because you couldn't Cut. color it. The stuff was so rough, you couldn't color it. Yep. Like if you would you orange and brown out. it, and it would streak out. Streak out. So you just hand polish it, and you'd yeah. wipe it off and just Could leave it hand polished as your color. Back in the day, the you remember the really dry green that she used to have? I couldn't use it. Even it Not on work. stuff that rough. Yeah. You think we could have used it on a flannel mm-hmm. and at low speed? No. No. So it wouldn't work. I tried it a few weeks ago. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Took it I was apart. like, maybe our green isn't unique. Yeah. And you could use any green. And I grabbed a green bar. My thumbs up my little. I tried it. It didn't work. It didn't work yet. No, it's streaked out still. So. Yeah. Yep. I got a ton of those green bars at home from the old uh, stuff. And now I made the mistake this week of grabbing one of the new green bars and using it. I'm like, ah. There for a minute, I thought I was going to go and just go ahead and use up all those old green bars. And maybe I will. Maybe this summer I'll go through all those green bars and use them for something. When you when, Once food. you see the difference in color and the difference in clarity, it's hard to go back. It, yeah. it's And you know me. I love wet compounds. Yeah, I know and you do. old green versus new green, no comparison. Not even in the same ballpark. It's at least half again as wet. Yeah. At least. It's still considered semi-wet. It is, yeah, it's, it's not full wet it's by any sense. Show sure green is. Yeah bordering full wet oh yeah 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 it's pretty close that's why it's so much pickier to use the show Mm -hmm. our show compound because they are a little more wet so they can do higher end showier finish yeah that brown showier that's a terrible word i'm sorry show show i apologize for that but it's it's uh, most accurate show brown will melt in the shade oh yeah (laughs) oh yeah it's wet it's wet it's super wet (laughs) that one will not hold together Mm -mm. casey sent me a picture one day it's just a puddle he's like (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> i was like oh no he's like yeah it was not sunny here a minute ago yeah and now it is uh-huh I'm like, yeah now you have a puddle just oh, go ahead and scoop God. that up i remember back in the day <laughs> when i first started we used to work at a place called break bush it's a chicken factory uh-huh and where they're at is like in a bowl how are you doing time you know? uh you should probably just face it okay we can wrap this up Let's you want to go into the nugget. You're back. Why are all the nuggets? It's like there? a, it's like a fishbowl, <laughs> and it was super hot. Oh, like oh. they had trees surrounding all their buildings. Where mm-hmm. we were working was just, it was never wind ever. It was just, just pure hot. Summer. So when it would hit summer and we'd hit like mid nineties, mm-hmm. it felt like 110 yeah. in the shade. It was just hot. So we, uh, we'd always just set our compound in the fridge. Oh. Don't do that. How'd that work out? It didn't. What did it do? <laughs> like, crystallized it. Oh, really? And it was like grabbing a brick and trying to put it on your on your buff. Yeah. So then we decided you since it, it was in frozen. The, you put it in the freezer. No, we had it just in, in the, the fridge. fridge. Wow. 35 degrees was enough to freeze it's it. Plenty. We weren't, yeah. we were using just. It's a solid. It was like Keystone or oh, man. something from Peterville back then. High quality. Yeah. So, Top notch. We set it out in the sun, thinking that was the answer. Oh, and we yeah. just warm it back up. Uh-huh. <laughs> we came out, oh. and it was a puddle of, like, brown, green, white. <laughs> like, all three you of them, them. You set them side by side? They all melted together. <laughs> it was literally a, a puddle of brown, green, white. I. Man. This was before. Did you just scoop that up and call it the all-in-one bar? <laughs> you know, I said. I, as far as I, it does. The kid was working with me at the time. I said, I wonder if we can just take our buffer over and just like, <laughs> like get the stick to the pad. Yeah. That was the worst thing we could have done. Not only we wore shorts back then. Oh, like molting just, hot. I was early in my career. Yeah. But it was molting hot. I literally <laughs> melted all my hairs together on my leg that day. Oh my gosh. And I couldn't get it out. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> And hilarious. it blistered. Really? Is that hot? It was that hot. Wow. And it completely ruined the pad. 
Because it just caked it. It just caked it in. It was like, um, oh man! If you've ever been to a stand-up lathe shop, a lot of guys call it caking the pad. Uh-huh. They'll take it and they'll put on like emery or yep. put something on and cake it full. Mm-hmm. And Sound then buff guys do that too. the stone buff guys do that too. They'll let it dry. Yeah. And then they'll start working it. They call it putting a head on their buff. Mm-hmm. And then they'll start working it in. <laughs> it did not work at all. Like it was a bad deal for me. Like it made my day miserable so not only did i hurt myself and burnt myself i hate days like that but it was just in a bad way like it just made everything bad and i'm like you know what yeah go grab a shovel let's scoop this up (laughs) they permanently had a brown green white stain on their concrete pad outside because it was the porous concrete Mm -hmm. you shovel out the stuff on top but not the stuff below (laughs) did you ever use back in the day when you first got started, did you ever do some of the old school stuff like diesel fuel on a rag to wipe the tanks down? Shh. Did you ever do any of that? <laughs> there it is. There's the there's the question right there. Don't use diesel. <laughs> Don't use diesel, but it was the fuel. I was just uh, thinking about uh, like I'm thinking about you back in the day, early in your career. You've come to their place to polish their trucks. You now left a like some some nationality flag on their concrete. <laughs> And, and I'm just, like, thinking about all the other stuff. I'm like, what other, like... So, I do you know, know a lot of Paul... I think of the fly-by-nights, like, that you hear about. Everybody so uses gasoline. Yeah, yeah gasoline, yeah, diesel. I, we have... <laughs> we had uh, used diesel, but it was fuel. It was fuel. We have uh, some polishers in our area that... Uh, Wipe everything down with gasoline. No, no, no. Way worse. They take a rag, and they dip it in that, and then they're in the customer's fuel tank... And then wipe it all down with that. With diesel? As far as I know. No way. Well, in Diesel would be too oily, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah. It'd be a nightmare. But I don't know. I mean, I'm sure it'd look good. It'd be a high gloss. I have known a lot of polishers to use gasoline. Yeah. Um, so uh, A lot of guys would do that because it looks cherry when you do it. <laughs> yeah. I did it one time. Once is all you did it. And the customer I, called me. I only me. tried it once, but I didn't like it. <laughs> I didn't like it either. It looked great. Yeah. It does. But the customer washed it a week later. Shoof. And it was gone. And he wow. called me. He was like, uh, my polish is gone. When are you coming back to fix this? And I was like, wow. No. Uh, and that was like, I didn't know any better. Yeah. Like a, a, a fellow polisher had just reached out to me and was like, hey, you know, that tank would have looked a lot better if you just wiped gas on it. I'm like, oh, really? Oh, me right. being young and naive, I was right. like, Done deal. <laughs> Gas is cheap, bud. Yeah, it was. It was only like <laughs> ninety dollars. Yeah. Then. I was like, all right, I'll give even it a try. It, even if it was three dollars a gallon, you know how far a gallon would go? Not know? far for what you well, for what it's worth. Yeah. But I did it on that one truck, and I was like, oh my well, god, this is great. the this is the magic wand. This is the unlock. Yes. Like, this is what worked. So, like, at a show, it would be perfect. Yeah. But it would look like just trash sure, leaving the show if you sure got rain on. Just make sure you wipe it back down but with a good hand polish before it leaves. Yeah. <laughs> and that customer called me and lit me up. And I remember oh. I, I ended up going and repolishing that truck for free. Yeah. Because I felt terrible. Yeah. I, it wasn't like it, I did it on purpose. Well, you did, but yeah. I just you didn't know any better. Right. Yeah. I, Were you hand polishing at that point, or no? I was. That was polishing. right when I was early in my yeah. my buffing stage, just where it was like, it up, like no, it wasn't white lines. It was black lines. I oh, was really? I was just jumping oh. my gap so far, so far that I was going over my compound line, yeah. and I'm like, why am I getting black lines? Well, but uh, <laughs> see, this is what's so handy about having somebody like you in the industry. You know, having some of these polishers in the industry. I see other polishers, and they're they're giving people flack for not. Or for, for giving out secrets. And I'm like, if you don't give them out... That Paul should let me down the wrong road on purpose. That's just it. He was worried I was taking over his area. Right. And, and that's he just sent it. me down a shit path on purpose. That's the, And that's what I'm saying. It's like, if you don't have these these people putting this information out, then one of two things is going to happen. Either you're going to have terrible polishers in your area giving polishers a bad name. Mm-hmm. Or you're going to have people that are trying to get into it and they're just doing everything wrong and... You know, they burn a tank, you know, whatever it is, they, they mess it up and then it comes to you and now you gotta fix it. Yeah. And and on top of that, the customer comes to you is like, well, I had this other polisher do it and 
it looks terrible. Can you fix it? And then you charge him three times with that guy, Paul. You know, charge him. You're killing your industry both ways. Yeah, it's just a hot mess. And instead, you can give these people tips to get started and and help everybody out. And like I was telling you the other day about that, like, say there was a magic, you know, something you come across yeah. that's magic. And we've come across those. Yeah. In the five years that I've been doing this, we come across these little tips that nobody knew about or whatever. Yeah. Somebody figures it out or somebody tells somebody else about it. That person tells another polisher. That polisher tries it with a process that he's already been doing with the other product. Turns out it's better than what this guy was doing that told him about it. You know what I mean? And then they get talking back and forth and all of a sudden it goes from what this one guy told you, which was pretty good, to being better and better and better. And it just... Like, it's back and forth. It's the conversation that needs to happen, you know. It's hard because the industry is so artistic. Yes. That, like, the industry doesn't want to help each other because it's so artistic. You know. And it sucks. Right. But at the same time, like, those of us that don't mind helping each other out, I feel like it is growing amongst the people that are helping each other out. And some of those people are helping the people that don't want to help anybody, which is fine, too. Yeah. But at the same time, hopefully some of those people start coming around. And this, this will stem from, like, even as far as, like, um, Nico. Yeah. Um, I've only known him a couple months. Yeah. And I reached out to him because I, I know he was doing something I don't do. Yeah. And I wanted to know, like, how are you doing this to get to this? Mm-hmm. Like, I wanted to be able to take my stainless that next level. Yeah. Because he's doing an A1 finish. He's doing A1. Yeah. And, like... We didn't know stage. anything about A4 was possible with a buffer. Right. And we had some stuff graded out well above that. So awesome. to be able to do that with a buffer is... Impressive. Unreal. And there you go. Like, he let he gave out a tip that he uses on, on a daily basis. It's not even, like, a secret. And we fine-tuned it and made it work for us. Right. And yeah. you made it this new finish that you've been in this for how long? 21 years. Yeah. And all of a sudden, boom, 21 years later... This thing comes out that is just not, it doesn't seem like it's anything special. Yeah. But like all of a sudden it's a game changer. It it's is. Just, you come out, it's, it's not something certain. I would use every day. No. But at the same time, like. Certain, certain when I need to When I need to turn up the heat of the show, it's there. When you want to do some art. Yeah, I'm not getting into art. You like, some art. No, no, I'm just like, you know, art on your truck. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Metal art. Someday I'll be able to perfect it and be able to swan song it to a, a truck sitting at Louisville. Like sounds like a plan. Make it really cool. Chrome. Why is everything chrome? <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's just polished aluminum. It may look like it, but That's it's just right. polished aluminum. Uh, you're going to wrap this thing up? It's 11.30. Yeah, we probably should. Yeah. It's going to be a bit of editing. And coming up, it won't be too bad. Coming up on 20 hours. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to start giving away trade secrets. You're going to sleep good tonight. One would think. You're going to sleep really good tonight. I am going to sleep. My Mikey's bed. That bed downstairs yeah. is super comfortable. And it's nice and cool. You were going to be out. <laughs> and it's dark. Yeah. Dark. It gets dark, dark. I'm going to be in a theater room watching a movie. I want you to come on. <laughs> Listen, I can't hear the theater room down there. So. Oh, we're good. It's nice. Let me jam it. Our room's right above you, but oh, you can't hear you. nothing. It's great. <laughs> it's so great. But I thank you for coming on. I thank yeah. you for being a part of this. I hope you'll do it again in the future. Yeah. I hope we can make this a more regular thing. And uh, I like coming up here. It's only a five-hour drive. It's not that bad. I'd like to get you on the YouTube channel as well. Um but I'm glad I'm glad you came on and was a part of the podcast. Yeah. I, I wish we could have done it during the golf voting. It's just it's so hectic it didn't work yeah. out. But I'm glad you were able to come up this week and do Me it. Too. I am um, as well. It's kinda it's nice that I'm able to come back up this weekend. This gave me an excuse to come back up and also I wanted to come back up because I wanted to talk like I wanted to watch you guys. Literally, I just want to stand back and just watch you work. Okay. okay. You do your thing. I'm just gonna analyze this. Tomorrow you can sit and just watch us and I yeah. think you'll really enjoy that. Yeah. Nice. No, you're gonna see us hustle on a deeper, <laughs> on a deeper cut. Right. Yep. That'll be fun. I'm ex- I'm excited for that. I'm excited for things going forward. I got me a nice new phone now. I know it's a potato. It is, but a potato. it should do okay enough video for YouTube. It'll do okay. Yeah, better than a GoPro, I would think. Cost more than a GoPro by a long shot. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> it is so. what it is. But yeah, we'll get this editing. Thanks for joining us for Season 2, Episode 3 of the Polisher's Corner Podcast. <laughs> I'm Steve, that's Evan, and we're getting out of here. How's that stay shiny? He did all the work. Go shine on. Oh, how, what's your, I mean, shine on. Yeah, shine on. There you go. Shine on.
<laughs> Deuces.